All right, looks like we have a quorum. So I would like to open the public hearing. Good evening, Maria and Bob and Jerry, Kathy, and all of you lovely people joining us. Um, we have a number of continued hearings as well as some new items. We are just going to um, go through these as expeditiously as we can because I know there's a long list and I want to get people on their way as soon as we can. So, and we're going to make it easy for the first one. 142 Main Street, we have a request to continue the public hearing um, until our next meeting on November, presumably November 10th. I just want to check with you. Bob and Maria to see, confirm that November 10 is a doable date for you both. No problem for Bob. November 10th should work for me as well. Great. Thank you. Thank you both. That's the second Thursday of the month, which is our normal day. Um, so I would just like to make a motion to accept their request to continue their public hearing until November 10th with a second. second. Second, Great. Bob Breen. Thank you, Bob. All in favor? Bob Breen, aye. Maria, Maria Lockhart, aye. And Jennifer Platt, aye. Great. One, that's 142 Main Street. Now on 110 Main Street, this is a continued virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, October 13th at 7 p.m. on the petition of Sean Ferris, representative for RECR Realty LLC, 110 Main Street, North Reading, MA, on an appeal of the decision of the building commissioner for the timetable to comply at 110 Main Street, Map 24, Parcel 6, North Reading, MA. Um, do we have Sean Ferris with us this evening? I haven't seen him. All right, we are going to put this one on hold till later in the later in the meeting and we can circle back to it um, to make a, a determination if we need to, but I would like to, the applicant to have the opportunity to be present and give us an update. All right, moving. Um, so we are, we're just putting that one on a temporary hold. We don't need to close it. So let's move ahead to 25 Maple Road. I see Mr. Keys here. So um, read the public hearing notice. A virtual teleconference public hearing will be held on Thursday, October 13th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Smith Sons Plumbing and Heating Inc. represented by attorney Joseph Keys regarding the property located at 25 Maple Road North Reading MA, map 43, parcel 23, owned by Tracy Ann Janino to appeal the decision of the building commissioner for a single lot exemption. Um, and if you recall, I was just looking at our file from last month, building commissioner Noel had told the applicant that the property it meets the dimensional and density regulations with our zoning bylaws. Um, however, determination of access would be required from the CPC before a building permit could be issued as I believe this portion of Maple Road is unaccepted, which is correct. Uh, speaking with town council, Alex Weisheet, Weisheet from KP Law, he's in agreement with the town. All right. so. Um, When we talked last month, um, it seemed like what, Joe, what you were asking for, for the applicant was a little different than what was in our package. And um, I don't want to speak for you, I'll let you talk, but it sounds like you're, you're looking for, you were looking for some sort of confirmation that the lot is grandfathered and accepted or accepted from the zoning bylaws. It's, it's grandfathered and exempted from the dimensional and um, density requirements of the zoning bylaws. And 
and I under, don't know under under forty A section six. And here's where we're. Um, and before I get there, I wanted to ask you in the hearing notice. It says to appeal the decision of the building commissioner for a single lot exemption. Right. The building commissioner said that the lot meets dimensional and density requirements, and we're not interested in that. We want to know that it's a grandfathered lot. That's all. As far as access is concerned and everything else, we understand that we would need to go to CPC and have all that. But the lot is while even though it does conform to current zoning for dimension and density requirements, it's also a grandfathered lot and it does not need to meet those requirements. That's the determination that we're looking for. And that's it. Okay. So, and, and I'm just, I'm just one, one member on the board here, but my understanding is, and I know our bylaws say that any non-conforming lot which comes into conformity can't again be changed into non-conforming and that the, the goal of the zoning bylaws is to try to have everything comply. So the, the, reason, the reason that I needed to be a non-conforming lot, like I said last time, is that I don't know what I don't know. I, if, if I put a house on there at this point, I don't know where the house would be located and what the topography of the lot is, what the wetlands look like or anything else like that. And in order to be able to put a house on there, we may need to put it somewhere on the lot that may violate setbacks as they read now, but it wouldn't violate setbacks if, if it was a grandfathered lot. It's a protected, Joe. Yeah, it's, and, and what my client is saying is that it's a protected lot under section 40, I'm, I'm sorry, chapter 40A, section six. It's protected by, by state law and state law detects questions the four yeah. So, so under the, under the state law, Jennifer, it's, it, there's, there's a, there's a test that you run. It has to have be at least 5,000 square feet, have to have at least 50, 50 feet of frontage on a road in existence on a plan. Uh, it can't be held in common ownership with anybody else. And, and, it's zoned for a and it has to be zoned family. for single family residential use or two family residential. Use. And that's by law. Yeah. Right, and, and if you had a, a 5,000. And that lot was, has to be 5,000. Has to be at least 5,000 square feet. Understood. Now, I always thought that that would be applied when you didn't have a conforming lot, and then you had to rely on chapter 48, section six to show that despite the current zoning bylaws, you are protected by the statute. But here you have a lot that comes from us. So I, 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 I agree that this is an odd case where we have a lot that would otherwise conform, but, but the, reason, the reason that I'm looking for the relief that I'm looking for is because I don't know where I can put the house yet. Mm -hmm. So if it were, if you knew where you're going to put the house and you're coming to us looking for a variance, that's something that we can we can do. That's within our our jurisdiction. Right. But, but I don't see I, how we I, can I, just stamp this as a grandfathered. You don't have to comply when it's um, when you meet the, the the dimensional requirements for a building lot. But I don't think the statute makes that distinction as whether or not it, it just applies the test. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's silent as to whether or not the lot is already conforming. It just has the rules. It, it says if it's at least 50 feet of frontage, at least 5,000 square feet, you know, not common ownership, residential. It, does, it doesn't say, it doesn't make that distinction that you're making. Are you suggesting that in all these situations we should just apply the state law? Because if you've got a conforming law now, 
in this case, in this case, yes, because it's because 40 a section six trumps zoning bylaws. So, but if, but the, it protects you from the zoning of, bylaw, but it says a, a zoning ordinance or bylaw shall not apply to a structure or use lawfully in existence or lawfully begun. So we have, no, so we, what, we so have a use. Have? It's, we have, we have a residential single family use. You're, it looks like a vacant lot to me. Right. In a, in a residential zone. Yeah, and I'm not going to, I, I don't dispute your zone. You're definitely in a residential zone, but it's not, you don't have a use in place. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a residential lot. That would be the we've use. Had, it's a vacant residential. Like There's, but it's but that's, still, that's still a use, whether or not, why wouldn't it be a use? It's, you have a proposed use to build a residence. But you don't have any in existence. in existence, lawfully begun, building permit, so, so, permit so, issued. But that so I mean, why are you why are you making that distinction for this lot when other lots up there that have been vacant that have that have enjoyed the grandfathering status, those were also vacant lots. Why is the rule being applied differently here? I don't recall ever granting a I do when I when I was on the board we did three or four of them mm -hmm. I've done four and I've had four different building inspectors look at this very same and, and that's the other problem I have Je uh, Jennifer is that we have we have letters from other building inspectors in the town saying that it's grandfathered and and then I have a letter now saying that it conforms to zoning and so i mean we that that that's that's why we want this clarification these commissioners just said it's a legal lot you know what might make sense if there's any case law on exactly what use is lawfully in existence is because if it is what you say joe then clearly this use is what it sounds like it is for residential purposes i mean there must be clarification of this okay I mean, if you want me to go look for something and continue this till November, I'm happy to do that. Because I, I mean, that's what we're stuck on, right? Yeah, it seems like that's the language we're stuck on. Use is lawfully in existence. What is that? Because it's not a structure there and it's nothing lawfully begun, right? Nothing's built. So that's the, mm -hmm. the piece of language that we're looking for. What does that mean exactly? Okay. Makes well, sense, Jennifer? Yeah, I'm just, um, before we... Go there yet? Yeah, um, but so the zoning bylaws don't apply to something existing, but shall apply to a change or substantial extension to a building permit issued after reconstruction. Da 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 da. The, I just sure. I, the way I'm reading that, Jennifer, is that all other zoning bylaw, all other, the only thing that 40A Section Six deals with is dimensional and density requirements not anything else in zoning. I would have to comply if, let's just say it was an undersized lot. And mm -hmm. this is the distinction that I disagree with you because if this was an undersized lot, we wouldn't be having this discussion, right? <coughs> I can't we, we, we wouldn't be hung up on use. Right. But um, because, it's a, because, it's, because it's not an undersized lot, we're, I mean, I don't want to, I mean, if, if I, I, I don't, I mean, I, I, yeah, don't wanna, I mean, if, I don't if wanna... Maria wants me to go try and find something, I'm happy to do that. Um, but all 48, and I'm sorry, I'm yelling. I'm just, Cause I'm no. on my, I'm on my phone. I don't have any internet. So when I'm, when I'm on speaker on my phone, what does every guy in the world do? He yells at his phone. Um, so 40A section six deals with dimensional and density requirements only. I would have to comply to zoning for every other thing. For example, safe and adequate access is part of zoning. I would have to go and deal with that before the CPC, but the dimensional and density requirements I am, would be exempt from. Can I say something? Drew? Sure, hold on. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, Bill Smith, how are you? Um, yeah, the whole purpose of this, this war, uh, Chapter 40A law was to protect property such as this. It was, that's why it was designed. 
And that's why it was designed for protection of the lots that people had bought in, in previous years to be able to build for their children or their grandchildren or something up the, down the road and protect it. But that's why this law is even there. By description, the law tells you if you have a lay piece of land and it's midst those four, four descriptions that we just gave you, the uh, 50 feet frontage, the 5,000 foot of, acre, of, uh, of area, it's zoned for commercial, I mean, for uh, residential building. That's why the law was, was designed. The town of North Reading accepted the provisions of chapter 40A in the town meeting, and then the town, now the town, even though they accepted the provisions and all the acquisitions that go with it, now the town doesn't want to adhere to the law. And every we were all playing in the same box. You can't, it's, it's by description, This this the law says this is what it'll be. And it doesn't only say this is what it'll be, it says shall apply, but the, when the planning board didn't have a, a meeting, uh, an open meeting, we can't produce any evidence of all the site. And um, we're willing to work, we'll work hand in hand with the building department. All we want is a, a memo saying that this lot meets the qualifications of chapter 48. That's all we're looking for. So we're looking for no permit, no nothing. And we'll work with the planning board, the building department, whatever we have to do to make it work. I did four other houses in that area. Um, and it was all, not all of them, but three of, three of them were um, uh, grandfathered lots. And it's a lot of work to research it, make sure that it works. And I usually don't come before these boards unless I'm ready. And, and I got my, all my permit stuff in, in order. But I did a lot of work on it. And it, it fits the description of 40A perfect. And I, I'd hate to think we have to go to Superior Court to get this thing cleared up. These people have spent, they bought the place in 1970. They've been paying taxes on it for 52 years. 52 years, now they want to put a house on it. You tell them no, but they took their money for 52 years. After, yeah, 52 years. But it, it's well scripted in, in the zoning book, in the uh, zone, in the uh, uh, chapter 40A, six, section six. It described oh. for T. And I, I'm glad to work with uh, the police commissioner, Jerry, and, and your board. And I, I really, I do, I really do appreciate you coming in here and talking. And that's why we want to kind of work through this with you. And I absolutely agree that uh, there ought to be consistency on how uh, things are being applied and treated. And we, and we want to understand how it works with, with this lot. Um, and I think, I think you're referring to and relying on the provisions of the fourth paragraph of chapter 40A, section six, which says any increase in the area frontage width, yard, depth requirements or depth requirements of a zoning ordinance or bylaw. So any increase That's shall, not, shall not apply to a, a single lot or two family residential lot at the time of recording of the endorsement, blah, blah, blah. And then it goes through the criteria. So um, I think what we would need is if you said, you know, we've had, if in fact this lot complies with the, uh, all the specifications of paragraph four of, of section six of 40A, and then you and you've had it since before. Um, Joe, remind me, did have they owned this since before this the, the separate, bylaws this, were in, if, in effect? Lots, it's been in separate ownership prior to zoning since 1918. It's, 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 I think it's been in, in separate ownership. I, I sent you all the title. Uh, I, I, I know you did. I just don't, I haven't. It's, it, it, it's existed yeah. this lot separate since before zoning existed in North Reading. And it's a two acre lot. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm reading. No, no, 
no so worries. While we're, while we're mulling. Can we talk? Grab something real quick. Jennifer, my, my biggest hang up is that I have a letter from the building inspector in 2018 that says it's a grandfathered lot. I have a letter from another building inspector earlier than that saying that it's a grandfathered lot and now it's not a grandfathered lot. That's that's my only hang up. Yeah, but they're not following the law. Okay, I think I'm... Um... And to and to give, but I had less. I'm going to ask that we that, that we're going to. I think we want to continue this because I think it'd be helpful for us as a board to go through and and, and parse paragraph four of right and I'm more, right i'm more than happy to share with you there's there's also there's been prior uh discussion with with um with town council on other on other lots on maple road where they they've directed the board or the uh let me see right here um they notified the town yeah hold, hold on so yeah, I got a letter here from from Copeland and Page dated November nineteenth, two thousand and one, that basically runs through that paragraph. Jennifer, I'm happy to scan it and email it to you. Mm -hmm. How they apply the tests and 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 everything else to determine whether or not a grant a lot is grandfathered. Um, I'm, I'm I'm happy to share that with the board if you guys don't have that handy. But that's basically what we're relying on is is town council's interpretation of 40A section six as they've applied it time and time again with the town um, and quite possibly I've got one. On, the, on that road itself. So I think that would be helpful if you scan yeah, that. I, you know what, I'll make, a, I'll make a copy and drop it off to, uh, to the town tomorrow. Beautiful. Because I don't, um, we, we want to give this its fair due, and I'm sorry that yeah, and, it, and, it continues, and, and, but it, um, we do have, and you have, yeah. competing letters from, or competing for, <laughs> interpretations. Letters from, 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 from building inspectors, yeah. Building which, inspectors which, and which town makes, council. So yeah. I would like to. Town council has been consistent. Um, well, not this one, not the latest one, because. <laughs> okay, fair enough. This one was uh, it was is supporting the building inspector on this, so it yeah. might be helpful if we have the prior letters that we can submit sure. to town council. Sure, and 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 again, the prior letter. I mean, to to Maria's point, the prior letter doesn't parse out, and and like I said, my argument would be that forty a section six doesn't parse out either the size of the lot right it all it says is it needs to be bigger than five thousand square feet which 5, we well, so are i mean it's and and you know this is this is the section is a bane to practicing real yep. attorneys yep. It's, it's horribly written hard to yep. apply <laughs> yeah, absolutely um, is and but it has you know it says has less than the proposed requirement oh, yeah. but at least five i mean it, it, it but at least five thousand square feet so it's working through this kind of clause by clause it's it's a tough one and i think you know it, i'm happy to go back through it with the board um and, but it's you got to kind of be able to check your way through okay. the paragraph okay so uh, uh madam chairman we'd like to request an extension uh till your next meeting 
Madam Chair, I'd also ask the uh, applicant if um, they noted earlier several other properties that sure we can provide did succeed under this well. under this presentation, and that might be an interesting comparative reference that we might use if we, as as Madam Chair noted, maintaining consistency consistency sure. from the board. Have you already given the other ones to the building inspector? What what are the other ones you did? At least five or six from Coleman Page. No, no, no. But I mean, what other what other properties were grandfathered up there that you oh, built on? Yeah, Mom Road. You know, but on Maple. On Maple, lot twenty. So twenty Maple Road. Twenty, and I think seventeen. Seventeen. Seventeen, maybe. Yeah. All right. I, there, there's got to be files on those. Maybe I'll ask Kathy tomorrow. See if we can dig them up. That's that, Mr. Yeah. Green. That's that, that's fine. Absolutely. Thanks. That might. That could that could be helpful, could be sure. influential. Right, because um, and as Mr. Breen has said before, this yeah. is not the first time this has been analyzed, yeah. and, and every time it's just and um, and 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 my a, recollection, fair, yeah, my my recollection of these is that the grandfathering part isn't the big deal. What the town is interested in and and has made us do before and is always interested in is safe and adequate access. Mm -hmm. I think I think whether or not, you know, I, this is the small step. The next step, you know, the the safe and adequate access is 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 the big is the big fight. So, but it is would that, just is, like like I said key, before, is, is the is the safe and adequate access the issue for where you're going to place the, it's the the no the safe and adequate access is just you know safe and adequate access where okay. where I'm going to put the house is completely dependent on topography wetlands okay those types so, of things okay that's which, fine. which we'd have to go before all of those boards anyway no. to, to work with them i understand i just um again um it just the interest in knowing you know the vision the maybe the the future vision is helpful too but i can understand your position as to why you sure. want to have an understanding of the complete lot and how it's standing yep. is is defined yep so You know, I'm just wondering, is this, well, I guess this is ripe for us to review because there, it's not clear that you actually need or uh, that you wouldn't comply with all of the setback requirements. In, in the end, we might. I don't know, but I, I, I'd rather have every bullet in my gun instead of not. You know, I'd, I'd rather know, I'd rather... I'd rather be able to avail myself of every kind of relief that I can get so I can do the best job that I can on that lot. The trouble is you have to start, the process is so long and yeah. the, the process takes a long time to put mm -hmm. together number one and it, it's, it's, it's gotta be laid out right or, or you can get all screwed up. Mm -hmm. But when, when it starts, you have to have the lot first and it's got to be uh, designated as, as a limited lot. I mean, uh, an exempt, exempted lot from zoning. And if you don't, if you don't have all those pieces in the puzzle, that's why we wanted to get the exemption letter first, and then mm -hmm. go to the CPC second, and go to the other uh, boards third and fourth. We work all the time with these boards, and they're good boards to work with. But if you don't in in in, in uh, exempted lots. There's not that many left in town. I think my family probably built most of them. But um, I mean, I searched for them all over the place. And it is a difficult for like the plan of uh, the Board of Appeals right now. Mm -hmm. You know, who's ever heard? What, some people don't even know there's such a thing. But that's what that law was created was for to pr protect people's rights and to protect their lots and their investments. And that's why it's 40 years. Mm -hmm. That's why I was asking you so strongly if they could have an open meeting. Because I got so much stuff I could show you, but it would take up half the town hall. Um, but um, I, I will, I'll do whatever I can to be cooperative. And uh, the building inspector knows that, or the building commissioner knows that, that we cooperate all the time with them. And I, and we take pride in what we do in this town. But we're just, it, it's this is kind of a sticky point when you do these, these exempted lots. But they, it's clear, it's very, very clear if you read that, Section 40A, 
section six, it's very clear what you need to pass for um, um, what for the talking? criteria. Yeah, for the criteria to put the app application in. So, and I'd be willing to sit down with Jerry and and, and Danielle uh, and my my counsel in between here, between now and whenever. And I and a lot of these things out that that are questionable tonight. Yeah, like like I said, we'll we'll go fish out the other files that we did on, and we'll just limit it to Maple Road. Just that, you know, I I know we've we've done other grandfathered lots and other Potter towns or on other streets in town. Um, we've done about ten. Yeah, but we'll just leave this. I I know we've done at least two on Maple on Maple Road that when I was a member of the board that I was involved in. Um, and um, like I said, it wasn't, I, I even think Jennifer, this, this was before uh, town meeting voted for uh, the CPC to, to handle safe and adequate access. I just mm -hmm. remember being <laughs> at town hall at one in the morning with the zoning board, trying to determine safe and adequate access going back and forth on, on little details. And it was absolutely miserable. So um that's where the big thing's going to be, but we're happy to pull out, you know, I, like I, 17 and 20. I'm we'll go try and pull the files for those. I'm sure there's ZBA files on them. <laughs> yeah. And we'll, we'll pull those and we'll, we'll go over, we'll, some other we'll go over those. Great. That, I think that would be helpful. I appreciate that. And, and then, and I'll drop this. Patience. Yeah. And I'll, I'll drop this letter off as well. This is the, the test that Copeland and Page kind of, or at least they used to swear by. They've, they've used this a number of times. And in fact, it says here, we're often asked to what extent single lot, da, 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 and this basically says, I've told you time and time again, this is how we do it. So um, I'm happy to happy to drop that off. Yeah, if you would share that and Kathy wants yeah. to get, you would just- um, maybe, KP's cha maybe KP's changed their mind on, on how to apply it, but that, you know. Yeah, and you know, yep. That I think would be helpful. And then um, we may, I may reach out to you and Jerry in between now and then if we need to um, just go over something. Happy to do that. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I think Bill wants one more. Yeah, just one quick question. Um, did either you or uh, the building commissioner get in touch with town council to get his opinion? Uh, yes, and I think that was read into the meeting minutes last time that town council agreed with Inspector Noel's determination that this was a buildable right. lot as is. So, 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 but there was no correspondence between our last meeting and this meeting with town council, I think is what he's asking. Yeah, no, so nothing addi additional on okay. it. Okay, okay. Um, Did they get any? They didn't get any? No, they didn't from the last meeting till now. They didn't do anything with town council. So what did they base their opinion on? Um, the conversations that you had with Jerry prior to us filing before the ZBA. Yeah. We had gotten okay. town council's input at the Correct. it came yeah. in essentially at the time of our last hearing. So that yep. we had that um, to rely on. Yep. Okay. I also oh, one of the letters that was directed right to the board. Yep, that's this. That's it? Yep, that's I got I got that right there. Okay. Um, right, thank you guys. Um, is everybody else on the board okay? No more questions. So I'll um, I'll make it a, a motion to continue the matter um, until um, close the public meeting tonight with a continuation till November 10th for um, further determination uh, for the applicability of um, 40A section six paragraph four if or other. I second that motion. Thank you. All in favor? Bob Breen, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. And me as well, Jennifer Platt. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your patience. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. So Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Happy birthday, Bill. <laughs> okay. He says thank you. All right. Yeah. Sec chapter 48, Section 6 is notoriously hard to read and interpret. It's subject of many, many a lawsuit. We may have the opportunity yet again. 
Um, moving on to 407 Park Street, we have a virtual public hearing will be held by teleconference on Thursday, October 13th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Kevin Corio. Corio, apologies for getting that wrong. 407 Park Street, North Reading, MA, Map 18, Parcel 59 for a special permit to raise chickens. Do we have Kevin with us this evening? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. That's wonderful. And tell me, how do you pronounce your last name? It's Cora. Cora, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, would you tell us just briefly what you hope, what you'd like to do here? Just want to raise a couple of chickens as pets. Oh, lovely. I see we have a site plan here um, with proposed coop well yep. in the backyard. Yep. Kathy, if you want to put that one up for the. They can see outside. Um, it's no, it's not really a structure. Mm -hmm. um, there's no, not going to be any plywood walls um, inside that uh, run-in area. We'll call it. There's going to be a smaller coop, and that's just going to be like a pine box, like a little shed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's no more than six feet tall, four foot wide. It's just so they can roost at night. Mm -hmm. In the main area, it's just going to be like I said, it's wired in with two by fours um, and a plywood roof. And I think I, I see a notation on here. Property is fenced in whole backyard. Is that correct? Yes, most of my backyard's fenced for the two my two dogs. Okay. Is the um, just asking for the benefit of your neighbors? Are the chickens staying in the coop, or are they free range chickens? Uh, no, most of the time they'll be in the coop. Um, but again, I have fenced most of my yards fenced in, so. Mm -hmm. Unless they fly over the fence, my I have a five foot fence. Um, they won't go into anybody's yards. This is a ridiculous question that I don't know. Are chickens are the, are their wing feathers clipped so they don't just fly? Uh, we can clip their wings. It's um, not a requirement. I'm I'm just uh, just just asking. Yeah. Well, um, you, you can you can if you wanted to uh, to limit their flight. Well, I was just I was just curious because you we have a five foot fence and I didn't know if the chicken, I don't know if that means anything to a chicken. <laughs> um, I think there's something we have Kathy you sent us something from a neighbor. Let me just pull this up here. That's motions. Uh, Chris Maloney, who at 408 Park Street, so he must be across the street from you. Yep. Um, supports your, your request and just only asks that you do not have a rooster, which is consistent with the town bylaws. Yep. Um, do we have any other neighbors or abutters who ha have comments or questions? Kathy, were all the notices returned? Uh, Thank you, Bob. Um, as is our our um, duty. Return of notices to the uh, uh, the director butters oh, and anybody. Yeah. I was on mute. Sorry. So that was a yes, Kathy. Yes, all the notices were sent. Thank Great. you, Kathy. Thank you, thank you, Kathy and Bob. Thank you for remembering to ask. Anything else? All right. Doesn't looks like we don't have any other butters. Any other questions? Um, and typically, we as long as the coop is well situated in the property, which this one appears to be, it's um, 
can't be within 20 feet of the front yard line, which looks like it's back and can't be within 10 feet of any of the side lots, which it also looks to be um, we typically limit it to eight chickens as our sort of has been our norm. Um, eight chickens, no roosters, and it's all subject to approval by Board of Health. They're the ones who make sure that. Um, there was a letter from a CPC. Um, thank you. Um, the CPC, where is it? CPC recommends considering any impacts on neighbors and no roosters. Thank you, CPC. Um, and Board of Health, as I was mentioning, they're the ones responsible. Uh, you have to go in front of them to get a permit just and they will make sure that the coop is adequate and that you have adequate um, plans and contingencies for all the coop waste. Right. Would, uh, Bob, you'd like to make a motion on this one? Uh, last uh, Jerry uh, Noel submitted a, um, a notice dated October 12th advising, just for the record, advising the uh, petitioners of the um, requirements attended to uh, what the building department enforces attend for um, um, construction and maintenance of the um, of a chicken coop. And I think the, the record should just note that that's part of the filing. Um, at this time, um, I would like to move to grant a special permit to raise uh, up to, but no more than uh, six to 10 chickens uh, for the respectively to the um, application for 407 Park Street, uh, North Reading, map 18, parcel 59 uh, on the petition of Kevin Coro uh, for a special permit to raise chickens uh, up to six to 10 in number, the coop to be no, located no closer than 20 feet to the front line and no closer than 10 feet from the side. Rear lot lines as shown in the plan approved by the board, uh, attended to the uh, petition. Uh, no roosters are to be allowed, and the permit is subject to broad board of health approval and oversight. Anyone like to second that for me? I second that. Thanks, Maria. Um, all in favor? Bob Breen, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. Hi. All right. You may have some chickens. Thank you. Best of luck with those. Enjoy. Thanks. And go and do see the um, Board of Health just to get your final sign off. Okay. I'll give them a call tomorrow. Perfect. Thank you. All right. We are moving on to 37 South Wick. Uh, we have, uh, let me read the hearing notice. We have a virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, October 13th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Jeffrey Miller of 37 Southwick Road, North Reading, MA, Map 17, Parcel 73 for a home occupation special permit for its creative <clears throat> consulting and productive business. I'm sorry, sorry not productive, production. Sometimes productive. <laughs> <laughs> for Article 200-42, North Reading Zoning Bylaws. Mr. Miller, welcome tonight. Thank Would you. you. Tell us briefly what you do and- Sure thing. Going? Yep. Uh, so uh, the business, JM Creative, it's just me. I consult as a creative director offering services in user experience design, as well as content development, development and multimedia production. Uh, got a long history in the Boston area as a graphic designer and illustrator and music and video producer. And I've, uh, I'm also known for leading large design teams for interactive and uh, advertising agencies. So most of my work is centered around uh, health and wellness content lately, but we'll see what the next year holds in store. Um, I just work from this office right here. So no impact to the surrounding area. No other employees? Just nope. you? Just me. All right. Yep. Do we have any um, neighbors or abutters? Well, I suppose it's the same thing. Neighbors who here who would like to comment or questions? Yeah, I don't see anyone. I don't see anyone raising their hand. Notices sent out and returned back. 
um, on the petition, Kathy? Yes. Thank you. And let's see. CPC supports this. Well, they do not object, provided that the business adheres to the criteria of the zoning bylaws 200 42. Um, building commissioner notes that the property is well maintained, and as long as they abide by the conditions in the bylaws, has sees no issues. Thank you. Um, and again, this is really what we're looking for in terms of a home oc. It's a requirement of the bylaws that it's just you, less mm -hmm. 300 feet or less, no outdoor advertising or display of goods. And it's really what we care about is that you're not having an impact, a negative impact on the neighbors. And I don't yep. see any here with you in your quiet office. Not so far. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's pretty mellow. It's a pretty mellow situation here in Southwick. That we have. Bob, would you like to make a, a motion on this one? Sure. I'd, I move to close the uh, public hearing and make a motion with regard to the petition of Jeffrey Miller, 37 Southwick Road. North Reading map 17, parcel 73 for the purposes of a home occupation special permit to conduct creative consulting and production businesses per article 200-42 of the North Reading zoning bylaws attendant to this grant. Uh, no person other than the residential occupant shall be employed therein. No more than 300 square feet within the uh, property shall be devoted to the use. There should be no display of good wares or signs related to the home occupation visible from the exterior. Uh, the permit for home occupation runs with the applicant and is no way transferable. There will be no customers coming to the pre premises and the special permit will be valid for a period of four years. We have a second. I, Maria Lockhart, second this motion. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Bob Breen, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. Uh, but aye. All right. Mr. Miller, congratulations. You may continue to operate from your home. So, Thank you very uh, much. That special permit will be available after a 20-day appeal period from Kathy at the zoning office. All right. I'll check in with Kathy then. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks to you all. Good luck, Mr. Miller. Appreciate it. All right. Good luck with your business. It sounds exciting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Sometimes exciting. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Take care, all. Absolutely. Thanks for your patience and best of luck. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Now we have, we're up to 197 Main Street. The hearing notice virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, October 13th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Katrina J. Eddy for a special permit to run a landscaping business at 197 Main Street, North Reading, MA, map 26, parcel 20. And Katrina Eddy, do we have her here this evening? Or someone on behalf of the applicant? Hi, uh, I'm Rusty Howes, the owner of the building, and Katrina just texted me and said that her daughter is sick, so she's dealing with her. She said she'll jump on in a moment, but I, I can probably answer any questions that anybody may have. Thank you, Rusty. You're the, you're the landowner, correct? Yes, yes. And I saw that you have a, a lease with, with North Shore Enhancements. Yes. And how long have they actually, have they been, they're there already, correct? Yes, they're here right now, yep. She, she just started her business. She worked for Tibra for a while and she just started her own business. Mm -hmm. um, 
she she did my property before um, for Tibber. And then when she started her business, I put her, I, I have her doing my property here, my home and stuff like that. She's really good. Oh, that's, that's a good yeah. endorsement. Thank you. <laughs> um, Kathy, would you put up the plan that shows where Where, where they're operating. And then we can take a, a peek at that. Now we do. <laughs> where I need it. And I have you. Yes. So, and if you could, for everyone looking at it, Main Street is on the far left. Yes. Property is sort of L-shaped going out and, and back, between, touching up to Plymouth Street. And then it looks like we have an area here, which... Okay. Yes, that's it right there. Yep. Right behind the dumpster. <clears throat> and that's where they would be yeah. in there. Yes. Um, truck trailer yes. and whatever materials um, i will say i appreciate that um katrina made a, a real effort to submit a, a fairly comprehensive package that's really helpful for us to have mm -hmm. a copy of the lease copy of the plans there is um, a letter here from cpc it said CPC recently approved a minor modification to allow for outdoor storage on this site. The decision is attached. Was it attached? Mm -hmm. oh, yes, it is attached um, along with the approved plan. Approval was issued with a note that special use permit for landscaping must still be requested from the ZBA as a separate review approval. And then the actual decision from CPC, this was issued August 31. Um, meeting of August 30, 2022, Community Planning Commission voted three to zero to allow a minor modification to the approved site plan for 197 Main Street as shown on the submitted plans. The modification consists of an outdoor storage area for a landscaping truck and trailer, as well as supplies associated with the landscaping business. They note that it's still subject to a special permit from ZBA as to use, and that all terms and conditions of CPC's prior conditional approval for the site plan review, as well as subsequent modifications and amendments are to remain in effect. And just because um, uh, it's the way that my, I've received the order of my packet here, Kathy, can you confirm that the plan that we're looking here, this is the one that was, a, that was approved by the CPC? Is this the... Was this, did this come with their decision? Or maybe Jerry, if you know, is this the, is that the, I just wanna make sure we're looking at the right plan as approved by CPC. Anybody? You don't, Jerry doesn't know. I'm going to shake there. How about um? No, I do. I, I do not know, but I do know that the that the uh, a lot itself is in a uh, split zone lot, which means uh, it's uh, mostly in highway business and it's partially in the RA district, and uh, there are special uh, conditions in which they'd have to observe um, relative to the split zone lot, and um, they would be allowed to go from. Uh, 30 feet from where the, their zone uh, ends uh, and 30 feet in. Um, Kathy, do you happen to have where that, where that shows that? Is that outlined at all? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Does it show on? I think the split lot, um, Rusty, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, yes. but it starts yep. around that dumpster, correct? Yes, it does. Yep. So that, um, that's 30 you Draw feet. a line straight back and then it's yes. 30 feet back. Yes. That drawing yeah. that you, the building. Oh, here it is. It's, it's actually, you can see it on the plan. 
and you're right it goes to the on the left side of yep. red yes. box yes it's right there in yellow yep so from that lot line there it goes in 30 feet from there um and they also requested that we put a fence i, I don't know if it was you jerry or uh, or somebody requested that we put a fence if approved. So it's designated, you know, to the left, you know, can't go any further to the right. That was CPC that requested. Yes. That. Okay. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. I see the line and Jerry, you're confirming that they can go 30, they can continue the highway business use if grant if a special permit is granted 30 feet to the into the RA district. That is correct. Okay. And I uh, it's very small, but I think that red box where the proposed yep. use is is it says that it's 30 feet wide. Is that correct? Let me see. Yes. 30 yep. feet. Okay. Yep. 30 feet max. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're, looks like you're outside of the 100 foot wet back, wetland setback. I see that dash line going around the lower part of the property. Okay. Do we have uh, any uh, neighbors, any abutters here? Yeah. Yes. All right, I can, uh, let's see, I think I've left my, and who do we have? If yes, Cindy LaRose and Ruth Fierro. Thank you, and can you say, uh, tell us where you reside for the record? I'm on 6 Plymouth Street. Here okay. I see. Six, I see Plymouth is, runs around the- We're right, we're right, we're right there, yeah. Gotcha. Right, and um, tell us, so through, through the board, uh, what questions or concerns do you have? Well, concerns would be, you know, noise, what time are they going to start business? And why all of a sudden can we build, put a business in residential zones? Doesn't this open doors for other people to do the same? Um, we Don't we zone things for a reason? So um, on the first noise, I think that's a, that's a really good concern, and when we'll we'll come back and talk more about that, I just want that um, just flag that. Uh, in terms of the zones, and you're you're absolutely right. Where you know, there are the bylaws are set up to have certain uses which are allowed in various zones, and here where the lot is is straddling the line from two zones. You can continue, you could have a house going 30 feet into the highway business district or a business going 30 feet into the RA, the residential district, because the lot is in both. And that's just part of our bylaws. Okay. So that's, that's, that's the easier question. To well, we went through this a year and a half ago and it was, it was not allowed. And I'm going to house. Mr. Hunt, I was trying to take another business. And it was denied. Say that again. You were denied another business less than six months ago to put a dumpster company no, in there. Correct? Several years ago, we were looking to get a permit, special permit for a dumpster, dumpster storage back the empty dumpster, and it didn't, it didn't pass. Yeah, we wouldn't approve a dumpster. That's just yeah, that's okay. I'm allowed to yeah, yeah. I'll stop, I'll stop right now and tell you for the thirty feet that he's looking for. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I can't hear. Maybe if you. Oh, I'm sorry, I have a call. Uh, mm. I'm sorry, I just thank you. The thirty feet that he's looking for on the back of his property already has trailers all over the back, not thirty feet away all over the back. Mm -hmm. There's nine to, nine to 12 trailers out there at any given time. Not 30 feet off the whole back of the property. 
This is zoned residential for a reason. We have the right to have our privacy and to have our non-contact with dumpsters and whatever's going on. There's always noise down there, always. And it's not, he's not looking for 30 feet. There's already dumpsters that are way all over the outside of that. So, oh, and, and if I understand this correctly, I think part of what the CPC in terms of their approving this outdoor storage area was that there needs to be a fence make it, going along that line 30 feet in. Is that, is that right, Rusty? Yes. So there's um, two dumpsters on the property, one there and one in the front at Andrea's. Those are the only two. Mm -hmm. um, and um, where, where this area is um, shown on this drawing, they have one truck, one trailer, and some miscellaneous pallets. That's it. And she doesn't start till she's never there before 730, if even before 8 o'clock every day. And all they do is start up their truck, take their trailer with a lawnmower, and they're gone. That's it. Okay, so that means one truck, one trailer, not till 8 a.m., correct? And this, you got it. In this area, okay. yes. Yep. Correct. Yep. Ma'am Chair? I beg to differ. If you went down there right now and you looked, there is six to eight trailers in that other zone out of the 30 feet zone. Mm -hmm. those, Go trailer, check, please. Those, those, those are my trailers and those are snowmobile trailers. You're not allowed to have them there, sir. It's not commercial property. Well, and, and that's, I think that's good to know. It's not, um, and it's, um, what is, what is, mull on that for a moment because those are it sounds like those are not the applicants vehicles they're the owners yep uh, but it we would take that in consideration whether those need to be relocated looks like there's a fairly large from the pictures that the were submitted it looks like there's a parking area and i see a dumpster yep. and then they're uh, their truck and their trailer are, are on the grass area beyond the parking lot. That's right. Yes. I just want to take a look at my. I'm pulling up my, my plan so I can look at this a little closer. Um, mm -hmm. uh, board members, what sort of thoughts and questions do you have? So to the um, the uh, inter the abutter, um, the two um, citizens, um, you know, you, you see the image on on screen, I'm assuming, as we all do, is is that a, a fair representation of what you see all the time, or, no, is, or is there more? So, so as of last week or so, it was literally trailers everywhere. There was um, bricks on paving all over the place, and then once we got our notices, it kind of cleaned up a little bit. I can see this from my front yard. It. it I mean, this, we're residential for a reason. This, this is where we live. This is our homes. We don't need to look at this. We don't need the noise. It, it's not why we bought the home. So when you, um, when you say we don't need the noise, um, you know, the, the applicant petitioner uh, council uh, made, said, you know, they pick up their, their um, mower, put it on the truck or drive the truck out and they, they're gone for the day it's is, is that okay so is that's that... one truck right and, and one so that's two items so i'm going to hold you to that because i am up in the morning and if i hear any noise i will call the police every single day it's 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 not fair to us is there any other noise Excuse that's me. what i'm asking i mean that... There are seven to eight trailers, white trailers across from that area. 
not in that zone we're looking at right now, in front of that, by the wetlands, excuse me, in the wrong wetlands. And I don't know if she's storing anything in those trailers. And if she is, if it's anything to do with gasoline or products that she's going to be like um, putting her equipment together in the morning. We, we're a residential area. We want residents. That's all we want. We don't want this noise. We don't want this crap in our yard. So to the petitioner, is the truck activity, the, the parking of these other vehicles, is that part of North Shore Enhancement's interest or are they one of the other, some other business interest that occupies the same? Yeah, I can, it's, I don't think the noise that they're hearing is anything to do with North Shore Enhancement. To the left, you see my house called Vian in that picture. The guys come in to the office, grab material from the building, and they're going in and out. You know, I have probably 35 vehicles that they, they take home every night, but they come to the office, but they don't make any noise. You know, they just shut their trucks off, get their stock and whatever, and they, they leave. Um, you know, we did have a call that Jerry called. That's why Jerry came down here was... Um, there was some noise um, about 4.30 in the morning. So I went to my surveillance cameras and, he, and they were right. There was a dumpster. Uh, Andrea's dumpster was being emptied at 4.30. So I immediately went over and talked to Yanni and he called them and they're coming at eight o'clock in the morning now. So they were right about the noise there and I'm all for that, you know, you know making sure that they're, but this is, this back area here is private. The, the, that trailer there, never moves it moves maybe twice a year once in the winter and then i bring it back there to store my snowmobiles and there's another one back mm -hmm. from it also um that's all the hours is they never move so um that's my bobcat trailer to the right for when the winter i you know i don't really use it but for the winter when i move the snow and do the plowing and stuff bobcats kept underneath andrea's um but that's the only business here is me with my trucks, the guys coming in and out, that's it. And they get, they drive them home and they mostly go to the job sites, but that's it. So that your, your, your business interests that they, your trucks are all located on the paved parking lot. Is yes, that... they are. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a, spare yeah. van. that's a spare van right there. During the day we, 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 you know, we pull around the back and my guys park is the back door. They park on here for the day and then they're gone at 4, 4.30, whenever, whenever they're done for the day. So if you were, if you're required by CPC to put a, a fence, I, and I'm thinking it's probably along that, where that red line is. Yes, it is. Yes. Yep. So what would you be doing with the rest of your equipment? I mean, your, your van, I mean, do you, when you fence it off, do you still have access to get back there? What's oh, yes. There? Yeah, they just want this to come out, you know, like maybe 25, 30 feet, just so where she stores her stuff, which mm -hmm. stops at the dumpster, right. and then, it goes, then it goes back to the hill behind her truck. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to go from like there back to the hill, because that, that, that hill goes up about 10 feet, takes it to the Plymouth Street. I'm not sure where, where is 6 Plymouth is... When you directly take across the street, sir. So is it to the left of the yellow house? Correct. You know where my house is. I, I really I don't. So I see the yellow house and then to the left, you're to the left, you're the cape. Correct, sir. Okay. On the other side of the street. Correct, sir. Okay. So I gotcha. Okay. Okay. So he just said that he's going to store the stuff behind that fence. The new business. So, yeah, at that time. Did I misinterpret that when he said he's, he's going to store her stuff behind that fence going up to the back of the property? I, I might have misunderstood. I'm sorry. So, my, I think my understanding is here that if there's this little fence, 
you said around 25 feet worth of fence or so. Um, the Northeast, the North Shore enhancement equipment has to go. I mean, that's to say North Shore enhancement can't go yes. beyond it onto the ground. That's right. That's right. It has to be to the left of that fence. It's pro I think they basically want it so that, you know, what happens, they end up taking up more space and more space. So yeah. this is the, this is the barrier and everything stays to the left. No, ma'am. I think you're misunderstanding. I don't want anything behind that. It's no. residential property. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm hearing you there and it's something for She's us to talk about. She's got eight to nine trailers in a bar pack that she's storing in a dump truck. Where are they all going to fit by that fence? It's That's it's not going to... Two vehicles. What's two vehicles? She's got eight or nine vehicles, <clears throat> a dump truck and a bar pack. Where are they going to fit all of this? So it sounds like we have, we've got multiple users <clears throat> on this property. The applicant is looking for one truck and one trailer. Um, there are additional trucks and trailers, which sound like are not owned or controlled by the applicant. So there may be a issue beyond this particular applicant about things that are being stored on site, um, which I'm kind of curious about the CPC's um, endorsement. Endorsement, exactly. If there's, and if the intent was that there's not supposed to be anything beyond the fence. And that's sort of curious why you'd put a fence here limiting the, the use area, but then have other users who are already behind it um on the other hand if this was his house he could have his trailer and his trucks there so yeah it's a little, a little quandary there all right let's see what else we have in this the cpc as i said has approved the outdoor storage area up to the red line. And when would the fence go in? What was that? Was there a requirement on the timing of the fence or is that? <clears throat> yeah, I would put that in. I would call the fence company as soon as it as soon as it was approved, the special permit was issued, and I put it. I put it in right away because I know that's what they want. You know, it's, it would depend on their schedule, but uh, so respectfully um, to this petition this evening, I have. I'm curious as to the two abutters, uh, Miss LaRose and Miss Fierro talking about vehicles that I, I mean, I'm trying to identify, are they part of um, uh, Mr. Howe's uh, uh, business or are they <clears throat> okay. associated with the petitioner? And I know that, and I appreciate the information you're providing us with Mr. House, but sure, you know, though they, it, it, so it is, I, without that clarification, it's a little difficult to be able to advise um, uh, petitioner Eddie on this because these concerns are being raised and um, I, I'm not too sure there's been any clarification that uh, the, uh, the two LaRose and Fierro uh, might be satisfied with. I'm not trying to speak for the two ladies. I apologize. But, uh, you know, in one hand, they're remarking about a number of vehicles and I'm it doesn't sound like they're house uh, identified, you know, um, uh, you know, commercial vehicles that are used on their permitted lot. I mean, you know, in 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 in, and also, I mean, you know, Mr. House is saying that people that, you know, the people who drive them, they they drop off their trucks, they jump in a van, they go, you know, 
that doesn't sound like a lot of disturbance, but it seems to be, I'm trying to figure out for me, what's the disturbance that Miss LaRose and Miss Fierro are, um, are, are bringing to our attention. Uh, and um, the, and uh, if it's attributable to Eddie. Right, so Eddie, uh, Katrina Eddie is the two on the left, to the left of the red line. Those are hers. Those are what she wants to leave there overnight, pick them up in the morning and go to the site and drop them off. That's what the permit's for. The, right. the, the two on the right, the gray one is, is no longer, that was an old pickup truck, it's gone. Her gray one with the black hood, that's her personal vehicle that she comes, drops people off to, to pick up the other two. Those aren't there all the time. Those that might be there during the day and then gone at night. Those are her, their personal vehicles. They pick up the construction vehicles. So it's most of the time, it's only the two. Like after five or 4.30, they usually finish like at three o'clock every day because she has to pick up her daughter. Um, just those two are what we're looking for right now. Established a website with their business being here with their equipment. She has a bobcat. Is she going to store that here also? Is she allowed to do that? I don't really know. And her hours of operation are seven to five, Monday through Friday, which means if they're going to use this equipment out of this back and stock it and go, that means six o'clock in the morning, they're stocking up these vehicles. And are they fueling them there? Are they maintaining them there? And they don't get in until five o'clock at night, which means six o'clock, eight to five on Saturday and Sunday by appointment only. She's running a business out of 197 Main Street. I'm sure she has an office there. We have the right to our quiet time. We pay our taxes and we want to be able to come home and relax and not deal with this. Thank you. So Mr. Howes, the, um, the, the concerns being raised by the abutters as to activity on the other side of the building, um, they're attributing it to Miss Eddie. No. Uh, and you're what, saying that, no, it, that isn't their, no, is that, not at you're all. saying that it isn't their activity. No. Um, on the opposite side of this, if with the way we're looking at it to the right, I have a snowmobile trailer. And I no, 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 no. I apologize. The, the, uh, it sounded, and I'm, again, correct me if I'm wrong, Miss LaRose, yep. I believe it was. You're, you're not talking, this picture, the lawned area where the proposed fence is going to go. Yes. You're telling, you're, Miss, Miss LaRose or Miss Fierro, you're saying that the, the activity that you're talking about isn't happening in this pictured area. It's somewhere else on this property. And this That's activity fine. isn't attributable to Mr. Howe's existing business it's attributable to um north shore enhancement because she's sir, the, sir, the bob it's, it's, it's both there are those trailers that might be his personal vehicles on the other side of the property is anywhere from six to eight white trailers and trucks that come and go every day and whose trailers are, and those those are north shore or are they house no they're mine there's, snow, there's three snowmobile trailers, and then there's three pickup trucks during the day. They, my engineers who work in the office building, um, they go in the back door. And that, they're parked there, and they're gone at 4.30 or whatever, and they're in at 8. So those three, three trucks she probably sees, okay? Um, two of my other engineers park out in the parking lot, and that's it. There is... They just get in, shut off the trucks, go to work, come out and start them. There's no activity. There's nothing else. This is just what you see is really it. The Bobcat trailer, never, it's rusting away. I never use it. My Bobcat is stored in a garage under Andrea's. So it's not out there ever. So, and, and just so, so 
we're understanding the layout of the property. Andrea's Pizza is <clears throat> at the front of the property. Yes. The main street. And you have your your building um, behind that. Yes. And and tell me, I'm apologize. What's your business? Your uh, automatic temperature controls. We do direct okay. digital controls. Um, and I have like I take up most of the building, mm -hmm. you know, for my business. Um, and that van on the left is just a spare van in case one of the other ones break and it's parked in the parking spot. Everybody else, I let them take them home. And, and I, it's, you know, it's a tricky spot uh, because you are in a, a business district and you have two buildings in the business district. They're allowed to be to operate. Uh, you have residential neighbors right next door. So that's, you know, it has, we have to be sensitive to impact. Um, yeah, and I can see like right behind your property, someone at the end of Spring Lane and the our two, um, Ms. LaRose and Ms. Fierro. Tell me again, what, what's your address? I am 6th Bloomer Street. I'm on the opposite side of the fence to the left. And, and, and I'm 18 Bloomer Street. I'm at the very end of the roadway, unfortunately. I hear all the noise that comes up the hill from mm -hmm. everything down the street. So, I mean, and there, there, you know, she's a, there will be, yeah, there will be some noise incident, but um, I think it's important for us to be thinking about hours of operation if we were to be granting a, a special permit here um and let me just i want to pull my board here a little bit do we mix it this is it's a property with multiple tenants and um the specific the the request right in front of us is fairly narrow it's just that well, a trailer in a truck and we could put as a condition that they have to park their personal vehicles in the parking lot um, rather that. than be on the fence area just to kind of uh, keep it keep it tighter to the business area um but bob and maria do we think we need to have the applicant come in and and talk to us or do you feel like you have enough information here to for us to close this hearing and, and just and discuss in, in I, fairness I, to the I, applicant um i'm <laughs> i'm reluctant to to grant anything without the name applicant um present i think the information that's been provided has been most helpful and it probably she might uh is it katrina eddy uh might add nothing more but at the same time i you know, in an odd sort of way, it affords everybody to see who the the people involved in the activities of the, the, the building are. And I think in all fairness, not only to the abutters, to the uh, to the property owner, Mr. House, and to the applicant herself, uh, I think it's just appropriate, if not quite frankly required, that she be she join she be she be heard on the record. I, I, oh yeah, I, I agree with Bob. I'd like to hear from her. I think I just wanted to say, based on what I heard just now, the conversation, the question was like, who's making the noise? I think the point that the abutters are making is that it's on top of other noise. So the more we allow on top of something else can be really noisy. I think that's something we need to take into consideration. It's not just that they're looking for like two vehicles. This is on top of other vehicles. And then the next time it'll be more vehicles. So I think that's the point that they've been trying to make. So I think we need to take that into consideration, have sort of a narrow operation, I think, as uh, Madam Chair has said, you know, a time frame and sort of limitations to where they can park and things sort of maybe we can work like some something like that out. The other point that has to be understood by respectfully by the abutters, it, and it's clear, you know, the residential is sitting a J all resident somewhere in all the residential areas in the town and not only in this town, but throughout anywhere probably somebody has to sit next to the commercial property they're, they're there now it's a question of how much space has been afforded um 
to, you know, between that direct line. And as Madam Chair pointed out, it seems as if there's almost an overlap here. And that's unfortunate for, in this case, the residential owners. So the, the protections that they're entitled to um, are those of true, ideally any other residential um, owner occupant in town. But in the case of, you know, they being on this side of the property line and the noise coming from the other side, which is clearly commercial, yet noise doesn't just end at a property line. It doesn't mm -hmm. work like that. And, you know, so I think that's the necessity here in this case for this petition for Miss Eddie to be here. So there's a, there's a very clear understanding of what goes on. I appreciate Mr. House's representation of what the company does in the morning. You know, everybody just makes it sound like I bring my truck in, I put it on and I roll out. Yes, it does. But it doesn't always happen like that. I, you know, not to get into it, but in it, my teenage years, I used to, to deliver electrical supplies and trucks got loaded in the mornings and it was clearly a commercial area. It wasn't a quiet activity. People make noise, cars make noise, people arriving make noise. Who's making, in this case, for the purposes of the petitioner, I think there has to be a clear idea of what noise she and or her business associates employees <clears throat> are making. And so I- uh, Kathy, she's, uh, Katrina has been texting me saying that she's trying to get in, but she's not being let in. Okay, wait, wait. Kathy, you're she, she applied to you now. Kathy, I can't hear you either. The, um, she's trying to log into the, to the she meeting. Should in, she should be in now. Okay. Okay. Katrina? Uh, Katrina? Katrina's phone, yep. All right. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear okay. you now, Katrina. Thank you for, uh, for joining. We've been talking about your petition for a while, but uh, we want to have an opportunity to hear from you and also for you to hear from the abutters who have some, some real concerns about um, this property. And it may not be solely your actions at the property, but, yep. but the larger scale of what's happening there. Um, so I don't know how we, how we kind of segue you in. <laughs> Sorry about that. My daughter's been home. She has, um, she has RSV right now. So I got a cranky toddler right now. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to hear that. That's uh, no, no fun for your child or you. Yeah. <laughs> no fun for the parent. Um, so some of the things that, I mean, the, the I think the main concern that we're hearing from abutters uh, is noise with vehicles coming in and out of the property. Um, and we know from your application, you, you're asking to have one trailer and one truck towards the back of the property. Uh, I guess a concern that we also have, and I haven't seen the, the CPC approvals for everything else on site, Mm -hmm. uh, is is just sort of the total impact of all the businesses on the site? Um, hey, baby. Um, or to help me out, I'm having. Uh, how can we help uh, Katrina get in here and, and advise? Can you can you tell us? Uh, let's just start hours of operation that you'd want to be at the site. Yeah. So um, we're family operated. Um, it's um, me, my fiance, my soon to be stepson, um, we drop our daughter off at daycare in Saugus at seven. So we don't even get there until 745. Um, and I leave work by 215 to get her. And, you know, Mike and Spencer are parking the truck and leaving the yard by somewhere between four and five. Are you seven days a week, five days a week? Um, no, nope. so we run um, Monday through Friday at those hours that I had just mentioned. Um, Saturday, we try to come in around 8 30, 9 o'clock or so. Um, but we usually call it an early day. Um, 
usually by like one or two unless we're you know at a bigger job site Mm -hmm. um but we never run later than four or five o'clock and then closed on sunday yes okay um I think what might be helpful for the board, mm-hmm. um, because first, like, just to just kind of recap a little bit, I I appreciate what you're looking to do seems fairly minor, yep. um, and we have we have the plan, we have um, advice from CPC that all of your activities would have to be. I don't know if you see the if you're on a phone if you can see the photo up would have to be essentially on the left of the, the red line. Yep. And with a fence installed to basically make sure that all the activities on the left. Sure. Um, but what I want to do is, um, I think we ought to see what CPC has put in terms of if there are other conditions or limitations on the entire on all activity on the site, because often when we do a, a permit, we'll say you know, not you know, hours of operation and not to exceed this many vehicles. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I think what we're seeing here for you doesn't seem, it, it, it doesn't seem. Um, Me, yeah. You know, you're not asking for much, but I don't know how that adds into everything else at the site. Yep. Um, that being said, I mean, I don't know what my board members here, other thoughts or considerations you'd have, but I, I'd kind of like to have a little better, you know, maybe we'll take a swing by the site um, to see if we can get the CPC a- approvals for so while, while we've got um, Miss Eddie and we have the um, the abutters mm-hmm. all on the same Thank you, Bob. Zoom, if this is where, um, maybe they could um, speak to Miss Eddie. I don't know if she's ever had a conversation with them about their their um, what they've experienced, sure. and she could have an understanding of what why you know their their. Uh, in disagreement over this petition and I will without putting words in their mouth as it were um, there's noise coming from the lot they say it isn't just like isolated to an early morning seemingly early morning drop off and go and then uh, return in the day and you know they believe it is part of possibly um, North Shore enhancement and I just think you um, are Owed the um, the favor of hearing uh, what they say to see if um, if it is um, something that you have under your control. So I would encourage um, Miss LaRose and Miss Fierro to um, um, repeat what was said earlier. Hi, Miss Eddie. Hi. You have a property. You so I think you're going to have to speak here? up. Um, it's a little, you're a little muffled. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have a mask on. You, you, you store, you have, a, you have a property at 19 Platinum Street in Sargas. Is that your primary location? That's my, no, that's yeah. where I live. No, that's where I live. Okay. So why do you have to keep your equipment here? Because I already take care of the property and... It's a perfect size for what I'm running my business for, and I have an office space in that building also. Which means you're already running an office out of there, which you said that you're just gonna use it for storage. So now you have a business there, correct? I, I do have my business there. Okay, you never said that. You said you only want to store extra equipment there, correct? I have my trailer, I have my truck. And that's all you're gonna store there? Two pieces of equipment, no bucket, no trailer, and you already have pavers that are out there on the ground. I do. Those are leftovers from other jobs, which will be used at other job sites. 
it sounds like this is, um, I, I, I listened to an interview with you and I respect you that you're coming up with a business and you're doing a great thing for yourself. However, you want to, your goal in that interview that you talked about was to increase the size of your business. Mm -hmm. so where are you going to keep that equipment after that? If you can't see your equipment anywhere else now. Because I would end up having to have to get a second yard somewhere. But if my office is run out of there, that's where my main truck and my main trailer are going to be. Correct. But you always said that you were just going to use it for storage. Now you're already telling us your business is out of there, correct? Well, my storage is my trailer with my mowers and my weed whackers and blowers and everything else. Okay. So you store your equipment in those trailers? I do. Okay. So yeah, where do you... Trailer. Excuse me. Excuse me, when, when, when do you like fuel them up there at the property? Yes, I have gas cans in the trailer. Okay, because you know that is a wetlands area. I was not told that. It is. I think they're, they are out of the one foot, 100 foot wetlands setback as shown on their plan. If they were in that, uh, they'd have to go to conservation for approval. Okay, thank you. So, but yes, that is something, I mean, wetlands were always very, very concerned about that. You can see if it, on the plan when that's up, there's the wetlands buffer area. Correct. It's a, it's a dashed line around mm -hmm. the bottom of the property and their, the proposed storage area for their outdoor storage is, um, Outs, not within the 100 foot setback. And just for, for kind of for benefit of the uh, audience, um, we do require if someone is running a, a landscaping business that they actually be running, running their business and have a office space. And that, cause we don't want just vehicle storage and um, that's something that we're really trying to clean up around on Main Street is just random vehicles. But if we have someone who is actually running their business here in North Reading, uh, there can be some associated equipment with that business. But where that equipment is, how it's um, where it's placed, you know, yeah. adequate screening, those things are very important to to this board. So I was, um, uh, I think you, we've, we heard that CPC would require a, a fence to kind of make sure we're staying tight to the industrial, to the business area, which I think is important. Um, and we can see in the... So Ms. Chair, the other question to me is, will you have a bobcat? You cannot I, move that without a trailer. So where is the trailer going to go? Because there's another piece of equipment now. That's not my trailer. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you have a bobcat and you're going to move your bobcat, you need a trailer to move your bobcat. I do, Correct? but I'm, I'm not planning on getting a bobcat anytime soon. You have one already, ma'am. It's on your site. No, that's that mine. That's mine, the owner of the building. I use it for um, removing snow and stuff like that. So it's parked under Andrea's. I have a storage spot underneath there. So yeah, that's not hers, that's mine. It happens to be on her website. I just think there's a lot of things that are gonna go on there that I think the town needs to be aware about that I don't think it's gonna be two or three pieces of equipment behind a piece of fence. And I want you to know that we are not in agreement with this. And I hope you take this into consideration that it's going to affect us as neighbors living in a residential neighborhood. It is zoned RA. It's not zoned commercial, it's RA. Thank you, thank you. No, we, it, it's, and that's why we have these hearings so we can get input from a butter so we know um, <clears throat> it's, we wanna make sure that impacts are being minimized. Um, I think we may, um, or do you want to take a 
continue this so you can take a look out at the property and take a look at other approvals or tell me, uh, give me some feedback here. So it, okay. So earlier in the, the before the introduction of Miss Eddie to the conversation, it seemed as if there were representations of um, seemingly excessive noise as, as um, uh, uh, a member Lockhart, uh, Maria Lockhart pointed out, noise on top of noise, the fear, the fear and concern of that. It seems to me, I just, I want to be clear about this. Miss Eddie, uh, for the purposes of North Shore enhancement, fence is going to be put up and to that left of that fence, as in that photo, will yep. be two vehicles, her only two company vehicles. And Mr. House made notice, um, note, Mr. Miss Eddie, that they'd go out in the morning and come back in the in the afternoon and that would be it that would be effectively your only activity on the property during a, a, a typical business day if mm -hmm. that's the case then great because it seems as if that's limited as much as we're deciding you know where this fence should go and what <clears throat> this is not it seems that there's a question of noise proliferation how's that uh for a term and Noise is attendant to activity. So is the amount of activity that your business, yours, North Shore Enhancement on this location simply going to be that? Come in in the morning, go out, come back in the day, go home. Or That's is there something more to this that we're not aware of that involves other machine uh, trucks, vehicles, trailers showing up in the middle of the day to do something or multiples in the morning or is it just simply going to be because of the location and proximity to what you do on that lot for maintenance and area ones in north reading and wherever you do your business it's just going to be those two pieces of, of machinery um vehicles excuse me and trailer vehicle and trailer or holding essentially as mr house i think put it was a cutter or a mower um and that was that's that um, just trying to yeah. move this it, yeah that's that's all we have it's we come in in the morning you know i mean the trailer only goes out two days a week you know to go do lawn cuts we come in we get in the dump truck and we leave and that's it it's if we end up going back to the yard for anything it's because we maybe forgot a rake or a shovel or something like that we make no noise on that site other than when we cut the lawn and that's during work hours, you know, and I know the, the noise that they were talking about was the banging at 4.30 in the morning a couple of weeks ago, whenever it was. Um, we have it on surveillance. That was actually the trash truck picking up the dumpsters. Um, you know, we, we have that on camera. So that, you know, I know that they called and said that someone was cutting stone, but, you know, I, I'm still I'm still asleep at that hour and we, like I said, we have that on camera. There's the dumpster truck. Yeah, I sent it to Jerry. That, that, that's nipped in the bud. That, that's not um, going to happen anymore. It, excuse me, Mr. Here's a, 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 and chair. Um, actually, I just want to... This wanna, chair? Um, and... Just one second, please. Um, what's something I just want to just throw out there to, um, to Mr. House? Because I... I you're just thinking a little bit more creatively, creatively here. When we have a the parking area, I'm assuming that's all within the highway business district. Yes, it is. Yep. Is there? Do you have is there space where you could just kind of block out two, you know, the last two parking spaces or two parking spaces on the on the blacktop for? Um, for their trailer and for their truck and trailer. Cause I, I gotta say, I do have a little, uh, the fact that this is moving into the residential area is makes me a little bit more concerned. I'm, so I just, I just wanna throw it out there and, and ask the question, would there be, as opposed to kind of spreading out onto the 
the rest area, putting the trucks and trailer, their truck and trailer on the blacktop. Well, what about the pallets and stuff? I don't know well, the pallets. Problem. Their I, representation were that there weren't any, going to be any pallets located there. Exactly. That that was uh, a one timer almost, and that they're they're going to be gone. They're going to be used at other jobs. Miss Eddie just clearly stated. I apologize, but it's getting a little run on here. The only two vehicles that are going to be stored there by North Shore Enhancement is the dump truck and the trailer that trails out the 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 lawnmower, the cutter the ride along, whatever. And that's going to only go out two days a week. So that means it's going to yeah. be sitting there, whether it's on the lawn in that space or in a park or a parking lot. So this pallet thing, which was raised, I, I heard, I know I heard it, that that was a one time only that's they're gone. They're not going to be used. If they're going to be used, they're not going to be stored there. So that's out. And I think the question being raised by Miss uh, Madam Chair is this. Um, is it possible if these, if it's only the two spaces, um, is there a need to cut out on that lawn two spaces if there's two spaces, one for the dump truck, one for the um, trailer in the paved parking lot? Well, on this, um, on this drawing that we're looking at right now, um, when we first met with the CPC or they, they voted on it, it says, uh, Proposed outdoor storage landscape in truck, trailer, and miscellaneous excess materials like pavers, cobblestone, and brick. She has like three pallets with leftover pavers. She's not going to like be storing stuff there, but um, so that's why. Well, that's a game I just, changer. I just wanted to let you for me, sit. just so everybody understands. That's the game changer here because if you're going to suddenly start storing stuff outside, not vehicles. This is now the materials and those materials are going to be come and go and moved during the day because we're running a different job changes the game a little here for me, because everybody's been going back and forth about this un proliferation of noise and I, quite frankly, I'm kind of finding it interesting that there seems to be noise on this side of the building but not on that CPC cut put put out that you know the, we're going to basically cut out two parking spaces and put them on the lawn with a fence to designate them. And now it's gonna be two parking spaces for the vehicles, but we also have to create space for, I don't know, gravel or rock or whatever else it is. This is different. Now we are changing, you know, these are apples and oranges. So what, what's really going here? And quite right. frankly, I have another, no, let me, I haven't looked at the lease yet. It was entered into in May of this year. I have a question for Miss Eddie. When you entered into the lease, did Mr. House represent to you that you were gonna be able to have two designated parking spaces? And did he at that time point out that they were gonna be up on the lawn as they seemingly are now? Because that's relevant to your interest. Because yes, now you're talking about pallets, holding materials. We're gonna need a third space. This is getting a little, I'm, I'm quite frankly taken aback by the amount of, of you know, running back and forth changing of, of, of the, you know, of the, of the application for. Yeah. Well, those pallets are pretty much on top of that stone wall that is still in the residential, the commercial area. You know, when I when I first Dad, signed the lease to, Dad, to be there, I just, yes, I was told that I can have my truck, my trailer, and as long as I kept everything far to the left, because, you know, it needed to stay out of the residential area, which I get. You know, it had to stay to the left, and we've abided by that. I do see, I'm just looking at the lease, um, because it, you have the, the indoor space, and then yep. it says, no goods or things of any type or description shall be stored, held or stored outside the lease premises at any time without the express written approval of lessor. And I don't see anything about, um, I don't see anything on parking in here. Um, doesn't mean you can't, but just have no guaranteed right to it. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's my guess is, and again, without being part of the history or going through the CPC files, is that the parking lot was goes right up to the to the end of the highway business district, and that's 
was meant to kind of contain the business within um, the highway business district and not in the residential, the RA district. It, this won't totally uh, eliminate the abutters concerns because, you know, they're, they're still residences right across from the, the parking lots. Mm -hmm. But in terms of containing this and making sure that um, if you are leasing out additional space for vehicles, that those vehicles are actually contained within the parking lot. And then the parking lot is actually serving to limit the intensity of use on this property. If we start allowing more storage uh, of vehicles on the, the grassed area, then the the original design and permitting of the parking lot isn't being respected. So that being, I mean, that's again, just, I'm just one, one out of three here, but my thought would be, I could see allowing the use because I, I support local businesses and I, I, I want to see people based here in North Reading and be able to, you know, it, it is a business district, be able to start a new business and thrive. Right. And you know, you know what I can do um, sensitive to their, you know, concerns about noise and stuff. The, it, it's the, I know it's not them. Okay. And, and the rest of this building is really me. So my guys come in in the morning before I get there, you know, I get in at about seven thirty eight o'clock and I can, I can tell them, you know, be, you know, don't yell across to each other or whatever. Not if everybody goes to the job site, but there are a few guys that come in to pick up drawings or something like that um, and some wire. We're not a big electrical company. Do we automatic temperature controls? So I can just tell them to be sensitive to the fact, you know, right behind us there across the street from six, there's two places. They have a little baby and he mm -hmm. never has any concerns. And if he did, I would be the first one to address him. And then the house next to this, you know, area that will, um, that, that Chris Herrick built, they walk through here all the time. And I asked him if they had any complaints. She goes, N no, none whatsoever. I said, okay, cause somebody called that there was a problem when we found out it was the dumpster. So they walk through here all the time. And the gentleman with the chickens talked to him all the time. Um, and then the, the gentleman right behind us, across the street from six adjacent to my property has a little baby and he never said anything to me, but I, I would like to figure out what this noise is. If in fact it is, you know, bothering them, I'll make sure I tell my guys, be guys, be sensitive to the neighbors. If you're in there, don't yell like it's, you know, 10 in the morning, get your stuff and start your trucks and go. That's, that's the house. only noise that I, I, I have here. Everything else is. Yes, I, and I appreciate I appreciate that. I just want to make sure that you're, uh, um, and I appreciate that you're, you're hearing these concerns. Yes, respectfully, I think that's great that he wants to do that. This has nothing to do with him. It has to bring a new business in a residential zone. Nothing to do with him. He's so. And I, I don't care that, I think about his business. He has a business. He has the right to have his business. He has no right to go in the residential area and give a lease to somebody. That's okay. the bottom line, respectfully. Thank you. Thank you. And I think, and, and we've, we've sort of, we have talked a little bit about this before about how far you can go in uh, again, but it's, you know, whether or not it's legally allowed versus whether we grant it are, are two different things. We're a, a, this is a special permit. It's not, not as of right, and we do need to consider. Um, don't we, we need to consider impact on neighborhood, and we're hearing we are hearing a strong voice about impact, whether it's from this particular applicant or if you're bearing the brunt of other things that are already existing on the property. But it's we can't look at you just in isolation because there's already. I mean, if you were going to be the only user here, <laughs> you know, obviously it wouldn't support the property. But if it were just you, it um, would be a very a, a different thought process. Okay. But here we have, um, please, we have we have existing conditions that we have to be aware of. Um, I think 
I, I feel like we, I think we've heard enough. I think I'd be comfortable closing this and then just moving on to some discussion amongst the board. But I, I if, if you are looking, clearly I'll just defer to my colleagues here. If there is more information that you would like or you think that we can get that would be helpful in us making a, a determination. I wanted to ask the, I wanted to ask the petitioner just a question, sort of to clarify sure. um, Mr. Brain when he was asking sort of about the storage of miscellaneous items. Mm -hmm. It was just it was my understanding listening to all of this that from time to time there might be some like leftover stuff from a job that would be used on the next job. Was that kind of sort that of, is it? That is it. She will not. Yeah. Yeah, some landscaping no. companies, they like to buy bachmos, they like to buy stone. That is not the case here. So yep. with my with with that, with the, with my understanding of that, um, seeing as moving into the residential area, I think maybe the concern is sort of like that business part of it. Whereas if it's just parking of vehicles, maybe in that space, is there a way we can contain whatever materials she needs in the commercial area? Um, I'm just I'm trying to think of a way to sort of Mm -hmm. work this out because if she has a landscaping company obviously she needs material or how is she right, going to do her job right so um you know the other option i could do is do you see on this drawing where it says employee parking right there it um, shows like six parking lots yes right there mm -hmm. so that right there that's all rough that that's all just like where she's keeping it now so i mean i could put it there um i mean it's still going to be in view of I really can't, I can't see their house from this for right here, but I haven't gone and stored in their front lawn, but I could, I could put it there. Then we don't have to go through the process. I don't think, or would, would we still need a special permit, Jerry? It's still, it, yes, it's you would still need a special permit okay. for the landscaping. Right. Very good. But it just wouldn't be going into the uh, residential. Right. Um, I, I, right. I think that could be a, you know, if we're talking about moving it to those four, that kind of block of space behind the building. Mm -hmm. I, I, I prefer that. I like it. It's further away from, from the street. More out of view as well, I think. Yeah. This chair, it still comes down to the zoning is a residential zoning. But that, that's not, not a commercial to zoning. Be, to be clear, that's, that is commercial. It's commercial the, there. It's the commercial. Building. Correct. Yeah. But after that is residential. Yes, thank you. We're, so I think if we are talking about moving this into those that spot right behind the existing two-story building, tuck it there so it's not located in the residential zone. I I like that a lot better. What about what about my colleagues here? I like that better too. Yes, I do too. So in it very, for me, and I, you know, I'm trying to move the matter along. I apologize if it seems short. If the spaces are gonna, if the fenced area in that photo that is it is just gonna be for the purposes of the vehicles, then in, and if the representations of the petitioner are consistent, yeah. that, that I think is, okay. is, is um is reasonable and if and as far as 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 miss um uh member lockhart pointed out if if you're talking about storage in a different location but still um on the commercial and not in the uh, residential <clears throat> that Middle. zone if you will then that is a um that's solomon you know that's that's a, yeah. a solution and again i think madam champ First, Madam Chair's point is being very well made. Okay. This is commercial. Yep. And again, as I pointed out earlier, somebody <laughs> has to, a, a residential always abuts it in some place or another. I think the respect that has to be maintained um, by the, uh, the town fathers and, and our, you know, is to make sure that these two interests, which are disparate, um, <laughs> understand there has to be respect given and, and, and to get along. And uh, I'm not trying to, in my personal view, I'm not trying to lessen the concerns that have been made by the two abutting residents, but um, this is a business property and they're 
their establishing of these the spaces um, is is effectively on a commercial area. Yeah. And I uh, just point out to uh, um, I just wanted to point out look taking a the so you and I, I think Mr. Howes actually just said this the if you look at the the Google overlay that that area where the employee employee parking is it it's dirt so that's it's not a paved area but it is within you know it's shown on the I plane as something that could be could be lined spaces and it's within the commercial area so i wouldn't i think i'd, I'd be comfortable with okay with a with a parking yeah. with a store you know the storage there within that kind of space shown on your plan again with the, with conditions on terms of hours of operation um to help keep that so are you thinking the vehicles can still go where we're proposing there but any stored pallets which is really nothing i can even move them to the do you see pat uh, moving down to the bottom right there to the left yeah keep going down more but now more more right right in this area here that's a good size area even go down lower yes right here that that cut out spot that, that's a big area too. I can put them also, which is in the highway business. It's so also in your wetland setback. So I think you have to stay out of there. If you see that dash line, um, Kathy, can you kind of like move along that? Uh, not, not that one. That's, that's actual wetlands up, go up. Yeah. That guy, that is your 100 foot, um, setback. So I think we need to keep any materials okay. and the like and equipment okay. out of that setback. But it okay. gives you up until essentially that bump out on oh, your. Oh, yeah, all the way to my loading dock. Yeah. Is. Okay. And just so I had a question for you, Rusty. Below <laughs> the employee parking spaces, there's two little boxes, a dark, those guys. That's just a stairway into the back of the building. Okay. That's the rear entrance. All right. So obviously, you don't want to be blocking that. Just right. Safety, egress concern. Yeah, I, I think she has like three pallets. So I'm going to take up. 10 feet from the edge of the building in that's it okay. you know so that so, won't be bad at all so you don't get issues with egress right exactly fire safety you want to make sure people can get in and out of the building yes yep okay okay i can do that chair plant yes so what happens when i go out next week and there's seven trailers on the right hand side of that lot do I call the police? What do I do? Call the I will do there. Hi. She is what? storing her equipment you may call the, Our building inspector, Mr. Noel, is the zoning enforcement officer. He is. If there's over three vehicles there. I will call him and file a complaint. Is that what you're telling me? Well, and, and to be clear, this is this is a commercial mm -hmm. building, and there are. I don't but know. It's in the back. They're RA and back. So, but if we're talking if about that. if we're no, we're not. We're just talking about we're talking about. Um, I just want you to just <laughs> if there are vehicles parked in the paved parking lot going to any of these businesses, they're allowed to be there. We are also allowing, or not potentially not allowing, but we're talking about allowing um, the landscaping businesses truck and trailer to be parked in this area of designated employee parking along with, um, and I think we'd, we'd have to talk about this board, some limitation or limitations on the amount of, of accessory materials um, because you just don't, we don't wanna see this becoming, you know, growing mulch piles or whatever without it being approved. Um, I, I will say this one thing. I watched an interview with Miss Eddie. It mm -hmm. was very, very uh, entertaining. And one of her goals was to increase her business and her equipment and her trailers. So I would just want to ask, where are they going to go? So, and if she's, and we want, if she's successful and grows her business. I hope she does. Then, and she wants, if she wants to park more of those vehicles on this property, then she gets to come revisit that 
conversation with us and would have to amend her special permit. And then all the abutters would have another opportunity to say, hey, you've been a great neighbor. You've been really living up to the bargain of the agreement, if there is one, or this has been a, you know, a nightmare and we've been calling Inspector Noel every week to, to shut you down. Well, you know, that's, that would be, it would be another public process just like like this, if there was any expansion. Same thing Thank for you. Um, Thank you. So I do have a question for Miss Eddy, uh, Madam yes. Chair, and that specifically is this, the delivery of these materials as noted by CBC supplies associated with the landscaping business. When, when, does, when does that occur? Is that just, do they just arrive, you know, through the day, bring it in, back it up, drop it off and leave? A large truck i mean is that no okay no and, and i i don't any pallets that i have uh, they delivered directly to the job site itself um okay. whatever's left over which is usually only a couple of pavers um that's what's sitting on on the couple of pallets that's there and that's what you bring back at the end of the day when the job is yes. done you don't need the material anymore you hold on to it for a future purpose or use that's what will be stored in the rear of this property. You drop the truck in the, the, the dump truck and the trailer with whatever machinery in those, wherever the end up being the two designated spaces. And that's pretty much your activity at this. That's the, that is the, the extent, if you will, of the activity of North Shore Enhancement at um, uh, 197 Main Street. Is, is that a fair... Um, I, Please yes, tell me if I'm... It, yeah, no, it's, I, I don't buy things in bulk. It's, I know okay. where I'm supposed to keep my stuff and I've abided by that. Um, you know, like I said, anytime I order my pavers, my wall block, my sand, my site pack, everything, like that, it's sent directly to the job site. I have never stored, you know, my site pack, my road pack, anything like that there. I, I have, you know, like I said, I might have a maximum of eight to 10 pavers at the end of each job, you know, and I only build with Teco block. So that's what I have. I know I'm going to use it on another job. You but know, not, not, we, not to put you down, down Miss Eddie, me, but you have me, stock down me, me right me, now. Excuse me. Um, so, um, so Tina, if, if we put a condition that you couldn't have deliveries of materials to the site, would that be workable for your business? That's totally fine. I, like I said, I don't do that anyway. So just, I just wanted to make sure that we under, understood. Um, all right. Uh, good, good questions all. And to Cindy and Ruth, any uh, any new comments? I know we've, we're going late here. We've got a couple other applicants we need to get to this evening. So anything new that you want to add to the record? I, I just feel that, you know, you, you as a group need to appreciate. It. It's one thing to have a business down there. We've dealt with it. He's gotten better, mind you, with the noise. But we're worried about more additional activity down there. There's, there's families there, there's children. That's what we're worried about. We're not doing it just to be pains. This is our home. This is important to us. We, we want a nice, quiet neighborhood. We'd like to keep it that way. That's a really, it's a real concern. And yep. uh, uh, we're, we're hearing you. Thank you. Um, so thank you. Madam Chair, if I may say something relative to what you said about the complaints and having call us. Um, we don't just accept calls. It has to be a written complaint has to be signed as well and i can't just run out that in that second to go run out to look at that complaint right a very small staff uh it takes us anywhere between five and ten days we have so many complaints in town um and we have a lot of work besides uh, not only zoning but we also have building permits that we're constantly um dealing with as well along with plan reviews and so on thank you uh, uh thank you Jerry, they, I mean, I understand that you, you have the whole town and there's one of you and one assistant inspector. So that's, that's a lot of ground to cover. Um, and yes, complaints need to be in writing, need to be signed by who they are. We can, um, oh, so um, good, good to know the process, the procedure. 
All right. Um, yeah. Maria and Bob, any other? other I, I don't have any more thoughts? questions. Any other thoughts or comments before we close this for the evening? Uh, no, I think um, I think uh, Miss Eddie has, for purposes of uh, North Shore, um, she's made very clear what her activity on the property will be. Mm -hmm. If I can just say one more thing, uh, real quick, um, you know, again, we're a family operated business. I'm not looking to be one of these tape companies that's got 10 to 20 trucks and trailers. I have no interest in that. You know, I'm just trying to run my business. Y you know, I've, I've been good about it. Like I said, I don't even get there until 7.45, 8 o'clock. Because I got to drop my daughter off at, at school, you know, and <clears throat> it's, you know, I, I'm not storing stuff in bulk. I'm, you know, I don't have this loud diesel truck that's starting up. We don't even plow over the winter. You're not you, like no one would ever hear anything over the winter from us. Um, you know, like I said, I'm just, I'm just trying to run my business, you know, and that, that's, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to store stuff in bulk and be this multi-billion dollar landscape and construction company, you know, do it, do I hope I, I'm successful over the years and grow? Of course I do. Any, any business owner does, you know, but you know, if, if, and when it comes to that, then we would have to figure something out. You're not going to wake up one day and you're not going to see five trailers parked out there. That's not my intention. My intent is to run my business, run it properly, and just make my clients happy and make money. That's all I want to do. And I'll do on and on and on my part, I will speak to my guys who do come in early to grab stuff and leave. And I'll just tell them to be sensitive, you know, to the neighbors. Um, I mean, I've been in there since 2000 and I bought the building in 2012 or, or 13. And uh, so nothing's really different from my perspective, um, but I will, I have no problem and I'm sensitive to the, to the neighbors. You know, I want them to be happy or, you know, like she said, um, but I will speak to them just to make sure, that, you know, that they're aware of it. Thank you. All right, and thank you all. This is a been very helpful to get input from from all of you, from the butters, from business owner, from yep. landowner, to try to try to understand what's going on out there and, and be able to have enough information to try to make make the best decisions for for everyone here. So, I think I'm ready. And you know, and I want to add one more thing. And to my neighbors there at Six Plymouth. I have no problem with you coming over to my office in the bottom left and say, Rusty, they were noisy this morning. I can go right to the cameras and I can find out who it was and deal with them directly. That's the way I am. Like Danielle calls me sometimes because I left the snow plowing lights on because one of the guys that retired from the town, it shines when the leaves aren't there, it shines on his house. And, and, and she calls me right away and I take care of it. So I, I do, I am sensitive to my neighbor's feelings and I have no problem. If you want to save the 10 days on the process, come right over and, and, and I will deal with it immediately. All right. You heard him. <laughs> <laughs> An open door. All right, Rusty. Thank you. Thank yep. you for making that, that, for being available and the offering yourself up as point of first contact. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's. Uh, it's getting late, and, uh, okay. and we have a. We still have someone, one or two people to go. So I'd like to move that we we close this public hearing and move on to uh, making a decision on this. Uh, do we have a second? I second. Thank you, Bob. All right. Okay. So. Close the public hearing. This is just deliberation between members of the board in order to try to move this to a decision one way or the other. Um, okay, for me, um, it goes like this, quite frankly, um, on the representations of Miss Eddie with regard to um, North Shore enhancement. It seems as if the activity um, that um, 
her business is going to conduct uh, seems to be, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, um, uh, wanting to get a dump, get in the truck, leave the, leave the um, property, come back at the end of the middle to the end of the, the end of their day, which turns out to be the middle of the afternoon. And on two, if not maybe three or less than three, I assume, uh, the trailer that is used for uh, cutting will be taken off and used. And in some instances, the return of materials that were going to be used to complete a job is left over. It's going to be stored some uh, after discussion and conversation somewhere else. I respect yeah. the position of the the um, the residents. I truly do believe me. However, it is a commercial property. CPC in yeah. their decision was willing to let this grass area um you know put up a fence if for purposes of designating in this case okay. north shore enhancements yeah. um spaces um if the activity if the disruption that was noted by the abutters is attendant to vehicle activity and or noise um inherently being on a commercial property, being any commercial property is going to generate some amount of noise. But if it's a question of North Shore enhancement, I take the petitioner out of representation that it seems to be limited. Um, that could be that we that could just be self-serving on her part. The only way we'll know for sure on that is is going forward in the, the the remedy to that is is was noted by um, um, uh, the building inspector. So this time I'm I'm satisfied with her um, her, her um, representation of, of the activity. Thank you. Maria, I'm satisfied as well as long as um the conditions that we discussed that the material be stored, I think in that area behind um, the building. And also um, I think the hours of operation sometime, like I think she said 7.30 to five or something, mm -hmm. or I'm not sure unless, it, I don't know. Um, and um, limited obviously to the two work vehicles and the two private vehicles. I'm not sure if we figured out where exactly they're gonna park though. So. Um... I think I, I, I like the suggestion from Mr. Howes to relocate the, the vehicle storage and any related work related materials coming from a job site to the area right behind the building within the industrial highway business district. I think it's that's I think that's a, a, a great improvement. Um, I think um, you know noise is noise is a real concern. We've got residential butters and uh, you're you're got residential butters right next to a highway business district. It's a it's a tight and um, you know, sort of uncomfortable situation for the residents who who are who are right there. So I think having hours of operation um, for any any noise producing business is very important. Um, I would suggest we say 7.30 to five Monday through Friday, and then um, 8.30 to four on Saturday, nothing on the on Sunday is consistent with um, what we typically see in, in, the, in the neighborhoods. And um, it, it's yeah. one that I would want to make sure that you know, the applicants aware we we're taking you on your word that this is when you'll be operating and it's not we're starting at 7 30 so we got there at six and we're gonna uh, around. um i think uh, having a condition that there's no delivery of materials to the site is again important because that's just that's a voice thing um, yep. we want to make sure that that's being controlled and it's um a special permit we typically these um you know, are for a limited period of time, which allows us to 
revisit this in um, you know, typically four years. So if there are issues or you're trying to amend, you come back before us and we have a, a chance to, to revisit and rethink this. Um, I do think, I mean, it, there's, you're not the only one there. You, and hopefully you're going to be the model, uh, a model business neighbor. <laughs> Um, yes, there are issues. <laughs> there are issues. I think the butters, you definitely take up Rusty's offer and go talk to them. I yeah. mean, you, you are neighbors and it, you know, that's, you, you gotta, you gotta work with each other because you, you have, you are certainly entitled to quality and enjoyment of life next door. Um, Rusty and Trina also, there are business owners there entitled to try to grow their business and do a great job, but they also need to, they need to be aware and considerate of where, where they are in town and who they're impacting. Cause that's, that's only, it's only fair that you know, they're, they're thoughtful and considerate of neighbors. Um, just looking here, see if there were any other conditions that we were talking about. Okay, so our operation, no delivery on site, location is that um, kind of employee parking area shown in the plan yep. and then I would I would throw in um, limit this to have it run for four years and that gives us a chance to see how you're doing okay. if you've grown out overgrown the space or um, if everything's going swimmingly madam chair how about what about a space um a space, an area to contain the miscellaneous item so it doesn't grow and grow and grow, like some kind of a, like a, a square Limited. footage or something. Yeah, uh, tell me that if this works for you, because that area on the plan shown as the employee parking, I think that goes, I have, where's, I've lost, uh -huh. let me pull this back up. Where'd she go? Mm. Well, if it were all within that. Yeah. Rent, up, to, up to the stairs. Stairs. Yeah, in that area right there. Mm -hmm. That has sort of a natural um, bump out in the building of the stairs. So you, so you can, if someone were to go look, you can see where, where they are. Um, so the practical question on that is if you're going to start using maybe the lot closest to the building right directly behind the stairs, which is obviously going to be probably the most concealed is the wrong word, but less conspicuous um, location for the for the, you know, set somewhat temporary, if you will, storage of materials. You know, now you're down a parking space for an employee. So where does where does that person go? So I'm, I'm not trying to reopen the 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 bottle here um i think before you know maria asked a question earlier are they going to be on the pavement with the um enhancement vehicles or are they going to go where cpc um said you know they were okay with going which was the original point of this uh, on that um basically I, i'm just calling it the grass area adjacent to the parking lot it was always the other answer that the, the trucks are going to go there, but the uh, the people that come and work for North uh, for enhancement, they're going to park their vehicles somewhere on the um, at the hard top and just walk, jump in the truck and go. So I, I would you know, say, Bob, we I mean, we're we're make if we're granting a decision here, or granting a special permit, we're drafting this. I my suggestion would be that. Um, Nothing goes on the, the grassed area. Just to be clear that the employee parking area is not currently striped, it is gravel. But if, if we limit their parking of their, the store, their two vehicles that are parked there overnight to that area, and then when they take their vehicles, they either park their personal trucks in that area or on the paved, in a paved parking spot. I'm not, a fan of the cars being cars trucks etc being stored on the grassed area which is in the residential district sure okay because that's where that the photo kept seemingly laying it out right right so that's okay we're not, we're not going we've moved on from that 
we're not going with the plan as proposed and delivered to CPC, but new and improved as suggested by Rusty. And I, I, you can't see my cursor, but it's this in the employee parking area right adjacent to the building and within the, thank you, Kathy. Yep, that's, and within the highway, bis, highway business district. So that area right there, it's like from the stairs, it's like a slope going down to the pavement. It's like six foot drop down. So I, I was hoping that we could, I could store any extra material there, but still just park the two vehicles for the nighttime only over where in the square box. Nope. I think what we're talking about is we want to get off out of the residential area. We're using this area behind the building um, because my understanding is the storage is oh, minimal and that we don't need to take up what is shown as six spaces of storage, but we could, that should be adequate for two vehicles and ancillary storage is what we're thinking. If that's, if the physical layout of that, if the topography is such that you can't actually store a vehicle there, then we may have a problem. But I think you, you got the board on, on, your, on your side so long as the activity is kind of is here behind the building and not over in the grass residential area. So yeah, what I'll do is um okay, so uh, I'll we could store the materials there and I'll stick her in the parking lot in parking spaces because that's just all rough terrain on a steep incline and it it just wouldn't be, be difficult for her to park her cars there. It's all rough, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'll stick her in the parking lot up top, um, right above you there. They have a bunch of parking, not way up that whole, yeah, that whole area there is all parking spaces. So I'll stick her in there. Okay, the, um, I wanna think about this a little bit. The reason that we that I really liked the area that you described is behind the building is that it's further away from Plymouth Street, if we're, if we're talking about another location for the storage, because it's, yeah, you see it, they're, I mean, they're coming in the morning, they're gonna swap their personal vehicles for the construction vehicles. Right. Landscaping yeah. vehicles, makes perfect sense. The more of this activity we can keep kind of tucked into the interior of the property as opposed to by the street, the better. So yeah. I see the uh, one, two, three, see the uh, parking spots above her cursor. There's like 12 in there or something. That mm -hmm. is the top of the fence at the top of that to Plymouth Street. It's got to probably be 15 feet up. So this is like, this is like a cutout. It's got a rock wall and then it's got an eight foot fence. So you can't see anything in this area there at all. I can't even see a house on Plymouth Street. Yes, all those are all covered. Those are all in, tucked in. So I would probably have her in the top near the rock. See that dark shaded area? That's all stone wall. That's mm -hmm. about a 10 foot stone wall. So she's definitely shielded and out of sight of anybody. Um, so I guess that's probably, it. because if you, and Jerry knows, if you look at this area where it says employee parking that we were originally talking about putting the pallets in their trucks, Mm -hmm. um that's that's a that's an incline and it's just it doesn't make sense for them to go there i'll just put them in the parking lot you know i'm just i'll throw out there i'm just looking at a overhead photo of this property yes in that area there's looks like at the time of the photo it looks like two trailers and a truck two trucks in that area yes that was my snowmobile trailer i had there years ago that's an old one yeah mm -hmm. yep Okay. okay. All right. So, I mean, uh, they, uh, all right, board. So, so is it safe to say that we're going to now locate the two North Shore Enhancement uh, business vehicles in the paved parking lot closest to the 
noted brick wall or concrete wall that was just discussed and and any um what was the term used um, or extra uh, material um they're going to be located closest to the building um yes. near the uh, near the the wall the the those stairs yes they're not it seems as if they're not going to need an entire no. parking space as no. kind of laid out even though it's a rough draft is that am i right i'm uh, trying yes. to get it this, yeah like, i'm trying i'm searching for phrase and yeah. wording so probably, we can make a motion. yeah like they'll probably be like four feet off from the building five feet off from the building and there's like three or four of them so they'll go right in that area close to the building we won't even go out into the, where that cursor is right now madam chair yeah, is that, i'm uh, moving my we, i'm looking at the cursor okay gotcha no I, have we is, have yes. we found um the the uh, a reasonable accommodation for the um the proposal the petition so, i mean i would have uh, i would preferred if it was all back there but i understand that's not reasonably accessible for vehicles and right then being on the paved area is definitely i think an improvement and where vehicles should be as opposed to in the grass district so I, I can i can live with that as long as we have the conditions on no on-site delivery and hours of operation and we've limited it to two vehicles i mean this is if you're taking up two vehicles two spots, that's in a way it's effectively limiting other parking so i think that's that goes to total site usage that was long-winded but yes madam chair i'd like to make a motion to close the public here uh the um the uh um, should we already close uh, board board commission uh, uh discussion we already closed. You can okay. make a motion, though, to, to move to a vote if you'd like. Uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, for purposes of the petition. Uh, apologize. A lot, of, a lot of paper on this one. There is a um, lot. Uh, sorry, hold on a sec. I'm just looking for their original filing. Ah. You want me to put the hearing notice up? No, no. Uh, I have the draft motion, Mo. This was all going on. I just want to uh, make sure that everybody is accorded. Here we go. Thank you. Um, I'd like to make a motion to, a, to a permit the petition of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, of uh, Katrina J. Eddy of North Shore Enhancement for a special permit to run a landscaping business at 197 Main Street, North Reading, map 26, parcel 20, attendant to this petition uh, would be the allowance of, st of storage of two vehicles um, on the um, parcel um, to be located, those said vehicles to be located in the um, paved parking lot, uh, close if not closest to um, the um, uh, concrete wall that uh, shields the, the property to Plymouth Street. Um, with regard to these vehicles, the limitation will be um, for two vehicles only. There'll be no delivery of um, of goods or um, or um, materials to the property, to the, um, the business at this uh, address um, and that this special permit will require um, uh, the, uh, the activity attendant to those, to the business and those vehicles to be um, between the hours of 7.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and no earlier than 8.30 a.m. and no later than 4 p.m. on Saturday. Right. I think that was what we agreed to. Um, 
Do you have a second? I second this motion. Thank you, Maria. All in favor? Bob Breen, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. And Jennifer Platt as well. There's a 20 day appeal period. Um, so you know, and then after that, um, you can get a special, the permit from Kathy. Okay. So thank you very, thank you everyone for your participation. This was a long and a long hearing and I really appreciate everyone being here and being uh, um, contributing. Wish you the best for your business and please be very thoughtful of your neighbors. They are. Cool. You got it. And again, Thank Mr. You. House, we appreciate your courtesy yep. to extended to, in this case, Miss Miss um, LaRose Cindy. and Miss Fierro. I think they're yep. um, uh, they're in they're, I wouldn't I would encourage all the parties to um, to keep to keep in touch with each other because it'll only avoid problems and not foster uh, any actions from the town. Right. I agree. Thank you all and good night to all them. Right, thank you. you. Yeah. All right. And we're going to just jump right ahead. Bob or Maria, would you be so kind as to read this hearing notice? My voice is starting to go. So um, I can do it. Sorry. Um, yep. A virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, October 13th, 2002 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Jim Trider, 58 Southwick Road, North Reading, Mass, Map 17, Parcel 8, for a home occupation special permit for his construction business per Article 200-42 North Reading Zoning Bylaws. Thank you. And we have Mr. Trider. Have you waited? Have you hung in with us? Yes, I'm, I'm here. You, you all, everyone who's still here is a hero. You, I mean, if I could give you something like coffee or donuts, I would, but we're remote. So let's, the best I can do is try to do these quickly and get you to bed. Um, would you tell us just real briefly what you're doing here? Sure. Uh, I've lived in North Redden for 49 years. Ran a business, self-employed contracting business out of my home. Uh, at the moment, I have no employees. I work by myself or I have sub subcontractors that work for me. They don't come to my property. I'm the only one that comes and goes from my property. My truck that I have, my box truck, I don't use very often. It's not leaded. So there's no exposure to the neighborhood. And there's, there's no exposure to the You can't see any of, any of my equipment or my truck from the street or from the neighbor's yards. And I'd like that special permit to continue running a business. And are you familiar with the requirements for the special permit? Yes. Um, So just to, is this mainly just to be doing bookkeeping and the like from home? I, I can't, can't hear you. I'm sorry. Is this mainly just to be doing your bookkeeping? Yeah, ma mainly what I do is I, I, I do my bookkeeping and my estimating, mm -hmm. you know, in my office. That's, that's it. I mean, I don't mass produce anything here and then ship it away. Uh, if I need anything, I go to Columbia and I go to the job. And that's it. Any materials stored on site? No. Bob and Maria, take it away. Pardon? Want me to do it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> any questions? Any for our applicant? I mean, it sounds. I move to close the, the public hearing. <laughs> Before you do that, Ed, Bob, you, you good? Sorry. Just to, um, <laughs> So again, uh, I, I apologize. How many vehicles, if any? What, uh... Well, I, I have a Ford Expedition, which I never use. It is registered, but it's there. But because I bought a, a Honda Ridgeline, which I use mostly, but I also have my box stand, which has tools in it. So if I go to a job site, I can work. 
but most of the time I use my Honda Ridge line. And does that go, is it just sits on your driveway or garage? Is there any? My, my Honda Ridge line is in my driveway. The other uh, okay. the box truck is uh, behind the garage where you can't see it. And my also my expedition is in the garage. Um, any any delivery of materials to your to your no never place for purposes. Um, nope. Any signage that shows um, your construction business no you on can't the property see it. no. Um, what do you that just I know it's because it sounds very residential in terms of your coming and going. What do you just go out as jobs come or are you just a I'm out in the morning and I come back at the in the end of the day. Well, uh, Actually, I don't work that much. <laughs> so the box truck leaves very rarely. My okay. uh, ridge line, I take out, I go shopping, I, I do my <laughs> errands, and, and that that's my primary vehicle. And I also will go to the job to see some, some of my subcontractors or the customers, and then I come home. Okay, thank you for the, uh, for the information. Um, I'd like to second the motion to uh, close the public hearing. I have to catch up for one second. Jerry, would you remind me in terms of the trucks that you can store at your premises in a residential? Is that box truck an issue? I know you know it can go up to is it one one ton vehicle. One ton vehicle. Yep, one 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 ton vehicle. One, and I, one ton. I, yep, and I think he's with it, those guidelines. Just, just so you know, um, uh, da, 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 da. Mr. Craig, took me a minute there. <laughs> we're getting, we're getting a little tired here. So, um, the, the box trucks is, is fine as long as it's a, a one classified as one <laughs> or less. Otherwise, they're not supposed to put a large construction vehicle right. on in the residential neighborhood. Um, all right, back to you, Bob. Close it away. <laughs> yes, I'd, I'd like to make a motion. Oh, to um to close the um public hearing. Okay. And with that, I'd also yeah, I'd like to second that and uh, approve it. Um, I'd like to make a motion uh pursuant pursuant to the um petition of um Jim Trider, fifty eight South Southwick Road, North Reading, Map seventeen, Parcel eight. For a home occupation, special permit for his construction uh, business per Article 200-42 of North Reading uh, Town Zoning Bylaws. Um, pursuant to this, that um, uh, Mr. Trider, to run his construction business, pursuant to Article 200-42 with this standard conditions, that being no person other than the residential occupant shall be employed therein, no more than 300 square feet uh, of the property location shall be devoted to such use. And there should be no display of goods, wares, or signs related to the home occupation visible from the exterior. This, uh, as is the case with all special permits for the home occupation, runs with the applicant and is in no way transferable. Uh, there will be no customers coming to the premises. And finally, the special permit shall be valid for four years. Thank you. Second. Hi, Maria Lockhart. Second that motion. All in favor. Aubrey and I. Thank Maria you. Maria Lockhart, I. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for hanging in there. And um, yeah. It, it, as, as always, 20 day appeal period to pick up your special permit and test of continued luck with your business. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Good night. Last but not least, poor Maxim, you have got to see local government at its finest going yeah. all hours. This, I think, is our latest hearing that we've had, and you get to wrap it up. Um, Maria, would you read the virtual notice for us, please? Sure. A virtual public healing hearing will be held on Thursday, October 13th, 2002 at 7 p.m., on the petition of Maxim Milovanov, 33 Lakeside Boulevard, North Reading, Massachusetts, map eight, parcel 248 for a variance from the rear setback to extend the existing deck 
and add stairs according to the requirements outlined in the dimensional and density regulations of the North Reading zoning bylaws. All right, you are on, Max. <laughs> Please oh. tell us what, hello, yeah. <laughs> if you're oh. so awake, please tell us what you'd like to do. I would like to share my screen because I'm not a native speaker and I would better to show pictures, what do I want to do and how do I want to do it. Kathy, would you let Maxim share his screen? Oh, sure. All right, it's, it's yours, take it away. Uh, and I'm sharing whole screen, and I hope you can see it. Uh, so I will start with existing deck, and what we have right now. Then I will talk about the wrap up deck, which was denied from the building department, and then I will show compromise solution, like not the whole deck, but just the stairs on back of our house. So uh, now, as you can see, we have a pretty small deck and we mostly use it not like a recreation area, but like side exit or back exit from our home to backyard. And uh, we have a lot of space on backyard, but not all of that our property according to the port plan we received. At the same time, our neighbors, if you can see there, have good whole house deck, and they even they even closer to the pond than our house. Uh, so ideally, we would like to have something like this, but uh, there is an issue with our with our property. If we want to have full deck like this, it will go beyond our property line. At the same time, if we can see the deed, uh, there is no second. If you, you can see deed, there is no exact location where is our property line. It's somewhere behind our house, but it, there is no exact dimension. And when surveyor was looking to our property, they were able to locate this point, it's iron pipe, but they didn't find the second point. And here on the deed, it says 100 feet on the side. And when they measured it, they measured only 98 feet on the side of the house. So uh, we initially wanted to have it like this, but as I told you, it was denied from the building department because it's beyond our property. And as a compromise solution, we probably want to have something like this. We have access to our backyard and we, we would want to have access to our backyard and to the pond itself. And we want to add three feet onto the existing deck and stairs to the back of our house. And it will work it will look like this. So we adding this part to the deck and we stairs to our house. Yep, and that's pretty much it. Why we need it? Because if we check the original uh, picture, what we have right now, deck is pretty low and it's kind of on the way when people go down the stairs here to the patio and then go to the backyard, it happen, happens often that they hit their head onto the deck and it's painful. So if, if you can approve stairs, it would be perfect. If you can approve the full deck uh, and 
despite that it's going beyond our property, it would be even better. Yeah, that's that's a it's a tricky one because typically property abutting a, a water like a water frontage goes down to the water line, and it's odd that your your deed has this line, a you know, straight line across. Yeah, it's it, just so odd. Yeah, they, I, I don't know. It's kind of beyond our 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 purview, but it might be worth. I don't know. Can you? Might be a land court issue to see if you could get approval on your subdivision because it's not required. LSEC, statewide, Durban land court case. Oh, it's. Um, I wonder if you're land court, if you're registered land. Anyway, that's it's kind of by, beyond our scope, but it seems like. And I'm surprised you're, it doesn't, the lot line doesn't go down to the water, but be that as it may. There's a possibility that it's um, um, somehow conservation preserved from the water uh, to the property line, and that's what's restricting his um, his you know his prop you, the usual property rights that go down in the water. I mean, I know this is kind of we're flying off to the this is tangential, mm -hmm. but it's an inter uh, you know it doesn't seem there's anything on any of the the drawings submitted that talk about. Um, those rights um, for uh, the petitioner. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I would say that you're, you're you'll have to go to conservation as well for any building within within the. Yeah, yeah. we've been to the conservation and the uh, we found the builder who applied to the whole deck this one and conservation approved us because we not even with full deck we not closer than 12 feet to the to the lake to the pond Wait, so conservation actually approved the full deck yes uh, i can i don't see it here but i spoke to one of the building commissioners and they said that <coughs> Everybody approved except the building department and designing department. Oh. But, so, but, but, yeah. so conservation approved it, but planning and inherently the building department said no. Correct? Uh, yes. And, uh, and it, it was JD who told us no. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you can see it, but yeah. Has this email. Looking at looking at their clearing going outside the boundary, but that said, tonight's and this would be a use variant. User activity is they're looking to use perfect. That's not theirs. They have the right to use the business if it was not authorized. The um, so this is from Jerry as to the probably the, the larger project that went into beyond the lot line and, and yep. um, Commissioner Noel is correct. I mean, we can't grant any use on somebody else on other own property. Um, you know, we were, I was, I don't know if there's any anything in your chain of title that may give you further rights, but based on this, we can't, we can't give anything beyond the lot lines. Um, and the, but you would be in front of us for a, vi a variance to build you know, what you could build within the lot lines. And, and this is Martin's Pond. Everything is very tight over there already. Um, so we have this permit application from our builder and it's approved by everyone except of Building department and permit issued, like, so permit issued, waiting for sign, permit issued, closed, abandoned. What, um, how about the permit issued? No, no, it... no, not this one, what is this one? Uh, Which one? 8407. 
Waiting for sign off. Um, and, that, and, and what what are they waiting for sign off on? So Smith looks like the uh, the abutter. Smith and Smith Sons in plumbing and heating. Maybe he's waiting on the approval from us before he's going to sign off. It was probably from another. Another Smith. <laughs> it was probably another department that had to sign off on it. Okay. Or it could have been the building inspector if I think to get him. Yeah. And he just didn't issue it because of where he saw it on the lot line. Yeah. So, I mean, if you haven't, uh, whatever we, if we approve anything, you'd still have to formally go to conservation to build this close yep. to the water. You would need their approval. Um, yep, so let's get it. And we, we can't give you anything going beyond your lot line. Um, so the question would be the, the plan where you're proposing just to wrap it around a little bit. Yeah. Stay within the lot line. It's, I mean, I mean, our, our normal rules are <laughs> the setback. I mean, no, nothing in this area conforms with the setbacks, but um, normally it's what a 20 foot, 25. Yep, setbacks 20, according, according to this, it should be 25. 20, 24 on the rear here and 20 on the sides. But we don't have 20 on the sides right now, and we definitely don't have 24 on the back. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost, uh, I, I'm not sure how your how your neighbor did it, but you know, that, I think it would raise a question of, you know, how can you even within the the, the lot lines, how do you even build because you're so you're going right up to it. You'd have to go outside your property. Let's see where Lakeside side testing verification. What do we get? One second. I will find the application. Okay. So this was the application, but uh, even here they had like a very little deck, but now it's house deck. So the proposed dwelling. So they actually moved back. If I'm reading no, this, they didn't. Is the proposed is the darker line. So did they come back from their lot line a little bit? Yes, that's what it looks like. But they are also going from the bank that 22 feet north. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Kathy, you're the, I can't quite hear you. What? So so they're going, back they're from also the, going from the bank that 22 feet, not hit the property line. Yeah, that's the bank. And it has 10 feet to the one corner. But yeah, I don't know how they got 22. Yep. They gave them the proposed dwelling. It looks like because it's uh, it was it was less non less than the existing one. Okay. If your lot line was to the water, it would be easier. <laughs> to... Yeah, I know that. Well, I didn't know my lot lines until I actually ordered this plot plan. Because when we were buying this property, it's fenced and we right. were thinking that it's all ours. 
but <clears throat> it I pissed. Not everything belongs to us. I wonder who owns who owns the underlying fee. You may have a adverse possession claim. Um, unless you know, Bob said that uh, there's it's either registered land or owned by the municipality or some such. Just again, it's an aside. It's not really in front of us. Um, yeah. Well. Here we are. We can't give anything beyond your lot line. That's and whether or not we can give a variance for the variance. Issue. So it looks like just kicking out the deck and and allowing for a stairwell down the back. Is that mm -hmm. pretty much a summary of what they're expanding the deck? I can't. Oh, it kicks it out. It looks like. Uh, it, yep. just, uh, right now that last photo you had up it looks it runs flush with the building now this but, is a kitchen now on the left and this is what we want so it would, it would come out how many feet would that be and that's basically it, it, the width of the stairwell yeah but it's we'll three, three, feet. Three, three feet and we have 3.3 3 feet to the line to the so the perfect and you're sitting right up on that line. Yeah. Well, at the well, same time, you're going to flush out the stairs on the other side so you don't have that cut in you noted that people hit their heads on, on right? <laughs> at least that is what well, I heard we, we, we probably won't use those stairs if we want to go to back. No, no, no. Uh, uh, um, on, on the on the screen now to the left is the existing dwelling. It shows the deck, the original and those steps. The deck yep. as drawn now has a width of, I'm sorry. This is four feet to this. Right, this and is, you. This I, is this I, no. Either way, um, just a quick note to the applicant. Um, I mean, as Madam Chair pointed out, usually your property rights extend down to the water line. Before you start investing in this construction, you you might have you might have rights that would accommodate the larger project that you originally proposed. Well, so, we just we discussed that in my family, my wife won't allow me to do that because she told me either we built something this year or we just forget about this project. <laughs> because <laughs> we, we, we applied to this permit like... Uh, Wait, what was that? No, that, that's fine. Um, uh, I'm not yeah, going to no, I, 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 I see your point. And his wife. Bob, anyway. Yeah, it's it's... It's really tight there. They're going into the place where it's closest to your lot line. If you had the benefit of the down to the water line, I'd feel much more comfortable, but I, mean, I don't even know how you build that without going on to land that's technically, well, doesn't appear to be yours to, to get there. I mean, I would, I don't know if there's doors or anything on the other side of your property. The, the, deck in other the corner yeah the other uh, corner you have more space here we have uh, like service and carriers that is exhaust from our furnace and our air conditioning compressor so there is nothing from the windows mm -hmm. i mean on the one hand it's we're talking a couple of of posts um, yep, and builder told us that they can move this post. It doesn't have to support. It doesn't have to be on the corner of the deck. It can mm -hmm. be a little. Yeah, it could be cantilevered out a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Don't love it, but I kind of like realistically looking at the property. 
it's not it's not causing a material um, negative impact on anyone. I, I'm just, I, I'm squeamish about going right up to a lot line and having no, no, no buffer, no legal buffer. I mean, if, if someone owned question, is yeah. it I, for the petitioner, is it possible that he could get rid of the back stairs and sort of maybe bump out the deck more to the left as opposed to closer to the water? I know I'm just throwing an idea out there, but I was mm -hmm. thinking like, where could you fit a bigger deck that's not right on the line? Yeah. That way a little instead and got rid of the second stairs. I like that better. Well, uh, we would like <laughs> to have access to uh, back of our house and if we extend this deck to this side then it will be completely on our way <laughs> like so, if, if, right if if the if the deck goes it appears if the deck goes out that way they lose the patio yeah there was the patio and there was the bus at all <laughs> mm -hmm. So the question on the, you know, I mean, not to you know, feed a dead horse, but the, the property line that Madam Chair is concerned about encroaching upon, that's still in the direction of the water line. Like, so the, the direction towards the water, excuse me. And it just seems as you noted, and I thought the same thing, it was unusual that he didn't have rights that extended down and clearly he doesn't want to pursue them extensively for that larger deck project. But in this case, even though he is literally going right up to the line and is, is even in the position to cantilever the, the post, if you will, um, it's in the direction of what the more, and again, it, it may not be, applicable here because of something that we're just not aware of yeah. but in the usual case you know that that encroachment upon the property line well it's not there isn't there isn't an abutter there it's the water so but, but, does that make you any less but does that just not I mean, I don't I'm know just, who owns that land and what if it I mean it, it's and I know a lot of the the old um, subdivision plans around Martin's Pond are um, a lot of them are just wrong, and they have you know we've had people come in where the lot lines are halfway into somebody's house. I mean they're just there's these are old plans. They weren't you know nothing was necessarily accurate. I know and applicants' um, photo here is is telling because uh, there are plenty of, of other houses around the, the pond that have decks. I don't, I had, without looking at their deeds, I don't know if theirs goes to the water line or if they have something similar that shows a, a lot line 15 feet short of, <laughs> of the water. You're like Mr. Active on your share screen here. Yeah. And if you can see, it, for example, this house, it's on the water, literally. Yep. <laughs> uh, would you, since you're sharing, go around to your property. I'd like to see it in context with its neighbors. Uh, well, it's covered with the trees. One second, I'll find it. You cannot really see it, but hidden in the trees yeah. yeah okay well I, um and and what is the just going back to the plan what is your 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 setback now i know we got we got to wrap this up we're gonna die no. here um we have 3.3 feet from the yeah. side yeah. of our house to your current setback would be zero <laughs> It's, it's, I think from looking at the, uh, the plan bef 
in our packet from before without the hand drawing. It's it says it's I guess it, I think it's three point three feet. Yep. Three feet three inches. Um so that has oh I really want you to confirm your lot goes down to the lot line. I would feel a lot better and then I would be happy to give a variance. But here we're going your your lot line. Who drew this lot line? Lot line says you you're right now you're three feet back. And I don't think you'd need three feet for your stairs. So yep. you'd be three inches off your lot line. Yep. I mean, it, it, based on the on the picture, like it, it seems like you you have the benefit and use down to the water, but based on your legal documents, you don't. So that puts us in a real puts me in a bind. I don't know how to help you out uh, how how to get out of this one. Do you guys have any thoughts? So there's other there's two other considerations that are consistent with other deliberations. Uh, in the first case is the memorandum from the uh, Community Planning Commission, which said what was just noted by the chair um does not appear to be a way to construct this without going over the lot line this letter dated excuse me october 12 2022 from the community planning commission second point being that allowing the construction this close to the lot line or the lake would set a poor precedent not exactly the most skillfully phrased term but um yeah. there there i would assume that community planning might see a lot of these and for some reason has probably in the past had these conversations. One last point, um, the question of hardship is always for any kind of variance action. Um, and it's not one that this, our, um, this board actually brings to light in a lot of cases, but um, you know, if you were not, I, I maybe you could clarify again if you were not able to um, extend the deck and it just stayed as it is. What, why is why are you experiencing a hardship other than the fact that you can't extend your deck? Uh, because when you go to back of our house, this already exists on deck, it's on the way. We cannot extend it to the left side because it will completely close the current pass and uh, in order to com comfortably get to the back of our house we would like simply exit the house on our first floor and go to the stairs just behind the house Right, and that convenience is understandable, but given the limitations of your lot lines, it, in other words, if you can't, if you cannot resituate your deck, how, what hardship, what 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 burden does this place upon you, other than? It's just not as can wouldn't it, it's not completely convenient. It's that, it's not convenient and it's difficult to go and not to hit it with my head. I, I think I mean I, I'd like to want to help you here, but I think you've done what has to happen first is clarification on that lot line because we're we're you know I don't think we're, I'm struggling with giving a variance up to the actual lot line normally we have it a minimum of 10 feet back and here you're already within that um and I think part of the issue is you know, you're, you get you're using the property up to to the lot line it appears like you own it but from the deeds that we're seeing and the assessor's maps, you don't. So I, I don't know who, 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 if anyone owns that, or if it's just an error in the original plans that needs to be addressed. 
because it, it if your if your lot line mimicked this fence here, I would be much more comfortable giving you a you know say sure bump it up three feet. You still have ten feet of setback, and that's enough to get around a deck and be you know safe. But here, you know, say the neighbor owned that and they put up a wall. I mean that's I don't, until I know who owns that space, I'm. How long has the grass been like that, just with the fence? Uh, we didn't install this fence, but we did uh, seed the grass because when actually con conservation come to our road, there was a clear ground and with the rain, it went to the pond and they didn't like it. They told us to cover it with the grass or with uh, some hard surface like with patio bricks. So we decided to go with the grass. And we didn't cover this area because we wanted to extend our, we, we wanted to build, build a deck. Then we got denied with this big, big full deck. And as a compromise, we just want to add stairs to the back of our house. I was just wondering how long has the grass been like that? You know, because um, I think Madam Chair made a point if this is more than 20 years and you it's like your own yard, that might be a claim for headverse possession, like you said. That grass, I have no idea. I just bought this house like a year ago, last August. And this is um, this is it's a new grass. And previous owner, he owned this place since 2012, maybe. So <laughs> I obviously don't live here for 20 years to claim this property. Well, you can um, you can piggyback off of prior owners. You'd have to get it. It's a process and it's it's an investment, but it might be something to consider whether it uh, would be worth it for you to establish legal ownership of that area. <laughs> well, um, it might be, but it's a question not about the property. Right now. It's a question about the, how far we can go from existing deck. Right. Um, so I, I think because we're, 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 we're looking for other solutions for you because I think from what I'm hearing here and sort of my comfort level, I'm, practically it seems like the deck would be fine, but legally we've got an issue that you don't, you know, your deed is showing that the lot, lot line is right there and you're building right to the corner of the lot line. And we don't, I have never seen us give a variance for anything that close to a lot line. There's always some some amount of setback from a legal lot line um, to allow access. Well, so here they also on the lot line. It's the same. It, but we'd have to look at his plot, his lot, and where that is in relation to the lot lines. I mean, the, the, just like the plan you had, I have, we'd have to see his plan um, to see how that was done. And see the, the if you look, the dark line is just the proposed dwelling that was, they came in there um, or just, you know, I, I didn't, I don't think, I don't know if we heard this case or not, but what they're proposing is actually increasing the distance from the lot line. So it went from something that was right on it, which may have been grandfathered, who knows, um, to something that is now further away. So it's 10 Maybe. feet on one side and whatever it is on the other. Yes, so but the, they have the same deck right to the lot line. And if I go with tape measurement, it will be 14 feet from the ponds. 
So right, but you 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 have to understand that their situation is theirs, your yeah. situation is yours. So, um, it, Madam it Chair, just, it doesn't have the deck on there. I don't know how that if they got permits for it, if it's approved or not. Well, so, the other part that that deck on the, the neighbor's deck almost looks like an extension out of the second floor. It doesn't look like a, a it looks more almost like a balcony. I mean, if I don't you want to bring the picture up, that's fine. But um, yeah, I, I, again, it, it's it just, you know, this idea that whatever occur, occurred, occurred there mm -hmm. controls what you are or manages your entitlement that look at that. I mean, they don't have stairs going down and um, it's a, it say, looks like it, it extends, yeah. Okay, so uh, I mean, the back of the house. Sure, uh, but again, the the situation is 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 different than yours. It just is, and that's the nature of property. And what I went to earlier um, is the idea that yeah, it'd be great if you could extend it out, but if you're reading the 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 uh, board tonight, there's a clear lack of agreement that you should be able to bring your deck out literally if not to the the very the 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 lot line that is established and we're searching for alternatives so that you can gain the convenience you want which seems to be if you if i remember correctly what you're seeking here just a more a greater convenience and con convenience is understandable but convenience is not the same granting a convenience is not the same as overcoming a hardship they're two totally different things and in this case i still don't understand the hardship that you're you're dealing with with the deck as limited as in its present situation i i, I mean maybe i'm just missing it the other alternative is, is that do you need a three foot wide stairwell if you're talking about just be trying to create access from the other side of your house around the corner if you will well maybe you don't extend the deck out three however many feet it goes out much less i mean you know but it's, you're not going you're not going to get you're not going to get i'm i'm in agreement from my read of this i'm uncomfortable with giving it to you to the to the the, the, the lot line because if there's some error and it goes over even an inch, it creates title and ownership interests that we should not, we can't, we can't be a party to. So unless you're going to research and find out more information about why that got established as your back lot line, um, there's not a lot that's going to be able to be accomplished here for you. I mean, okay. that's how that's my that's my position before we've closed hearing and gone to a vote. So you you suggest that we need to go to the court and to decide on this part of the property. It's not my place to to tell you, but it there's been several legal questions <laughs> broadly addressed here that, but you know. I mean, you, you with, can or can't do that. Uh, um, you know, that's totally up to you. But with what we have in front of us, which is this straight lot line right across the back, you're already right up to your lot line. And if we tr if we just treat it based on the the lot lines, we don't have really anything to work with. We're 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 aware and being. Um, cognizant of the fact that you have this whole back area fenced in and it it's it acts like your property but from a legal standpoint and on what we're allowed to do we can't treat it like your property because the plan doesn't it shows that it's not so we're limited to what's within the four corners of your lot lines which and if it, if if that were somebody else's property i mean well, it is someone else, right? As far as we know, it is someone else's property. But if there were, you know, somebody using that, 
we would I wouldn't be comfortable giving a variance right to the edge of a bordering lot line. Our problem is, I'm, I, my problem is I can't get over that lot line. Um, I think, pra again, practically speaking on how you're using the land, I think the deck would be fine, but I'm, I'm limited by the, you know, the, the plan that you're, you're giving us. So. Yeah, but I'm not asking you to go beyond the perfect line. But you're not, what you're asking is to go right up to it. And we have, there's a, you know, a 25 foot setback and we're, we would give, you know, we often give a variance from a setback to allow construction given the topography of, of a lot, but we're not, you know, we're not talking, we're not keeping any setback. We, we always have some sort of minimum. I mean, it's usually that even, even here around the pond, there's always some sort of setback. So that's, that, uh, that's where I am. I mean, again, I'm just, I'm one of, I'm one of the three. So, and Bob, I think it sounds like you're saying something similar. Maria, I don't know if you wanna have anything else to, to voice on it, but I think um, given, given the hour, we need to, to wrap, wrap this up and either let you go um, try to, find something which would show us a different lot line, do some research on that side or, but it, um, I'm not feeling that you have the, it's not sounding like you have a unanimous dis, uh, support going forward. And again, and thank you, Madam Chair. And the other point that could be, why is it that that lot line was established as it was given that you're on the water's edge? What was it about the, you know, God. when these pro properties were divided, subdivided, that they just hard lined it as it did. But again, um, yeah, again we, we can't assume we can't, that you yeah, go to the, the water if the plot plan says you don't. And that's what it says. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you decide not to allow us to do it right now, uh, then it's appeal process. I have to go to Survivor once again, uh, ask them to do more research on my property, and if they find a way to establish proper property lines, then I have 20 days for that, or I would need to do application from the beginning. Yeah, they, um, you would have to come back to us. We could, um, how could we do this? Um, and like essentially leave it open, continue it for several months for you. So you can, if you want to look into it and then come back without having to, withdraw yeah or you know, withdraw and then if you want to if you find out something different and want to come back then you can come back to us if we um as opposed to having a, a denial um yeah, we could continue it if you think that you're going to go look into this more in the next you know one or two months three months um or you could withdraw that way there's no prejudice against you in the file or if we bring it to a vote and vote against it then um you just can't, you can't bring the same design back to the board for two years but i don't think you'd be bringing the same design back you it wouldn't be really prudent okay i got it then if it's possible let's leave it open I will try to uh, go to different, maybe survivor who will find the second corner and will draw it properly. If it's possible, if not possible, then probably I can go <laughs> to the court and ask why this, or registry of it, because I have no idea where I'm supposed to go in these cases. 
and we'll see. So, yeah, if possible, then let's postpone it months or two or three. Yeah. So, and and then then if it turns out a couple months from now that you don't want to come back to see us, just let Kathy know, and we'll take it off the agenda. Um, if you want, and you tell us if you want to put it out three months, we can just pick the second Thursday, whatever three months from now is, with <laughs> October, November, December, January, um, and give you time to look into it and then let us know if you want to see us again or not. Okay, got it. Thank you. So the sure. December eight, the December date would be December eight, and the January date would very likely be January twelve. Do you have a preference on your? Uh, well, well, you you must have. Would you prefer to extend two months or three? Better three because this one took four weeks to draw from the survivor, and I don't know if I will be able to find anyone else but and if, if you do get an earlier answer you can always bring it we can move it forward by letting uh, the office know correct madam chair I'm, I'm sure why not i think we can i don't <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it's gonna obviously the information that he gets is going to resolve the issue right right uh, it's that simple he's either going to get more property line or not or not yeah okay if he gets 25 feet, he won't need to come. Yeah, well, it doesn't look like it, there's that much, but all right, I am going to. Um, I, I move we move. I move we yeah. move. Uh, continue the matter until uh, January 12th, uh, 2023. Thank you. Second that motion. All right. I second that motion. Thank you, Maria. I'm in favor. Bob Breen. Maria Lockhart. Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Um, I, I hope that if your surveyor or title agent, someone can find some something to support you there. Because I this is one of those things where it seems like you should have the benefit of this, the, the property. I mean, clearly, I'm sure the broker who sold you the property said this is all yours. Um, but it, it would it would be good to get it confirmed for you. I'd suggest taking a look at what your what your neighboring properties got, like what what define their property lines. There yeah. may just may be something. That... Yeah, there, this may all be. It's probably all part of a very earlier, an early subdivision. If you look at the whole thing in bigger context, it may make more sense. Um, but uh, you know, I, I'm hoping that there's a way. To, <laughs> There's got to be something out there. I hope there's something out there that makes it uh, um, helps it make it easier for you. So we will see you or not. Let just let Kathy know um, in January or before. Um, keep us posted, and if we can if we can find a way to move back that lot line, then I think you know there's makes makes okay. it much easier. Got it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right, um, that is that. You guys, I'm being. Uh, to, before we wrap up, uh, there's the matter of 110 Main Street. Should we continue that till our next meeting? Uh, they never made, they weren't, they, oh, right. regarding Sean Ferris representing oh, yeah, thank RCR. You. Should we, uh, I, I would uh, yeah. ask, I would believe it in the interest of the petitioner since it still seems to be a continuing matter that we continue that to our. Uh, November 10th meeting. Thank you, Bob, for still being aware at this hour of the day. Yes, I think that makes perfect sense. Let's bounce that. Um, and then if if they don't continue, if they don't appear, we can just close that and make a, a determination at that point. Um, and meeting minutes, I'm gonna I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna push I, I, regarding the minutes of our meeting second. on uh, September 15th, after review of them, um, I move, uh, 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 taking a moment in time to review the minutes, I found them to be complete and accurate representation of our September 15th meeting. I would like to make a motion to accept the meetings as and as drafted and entered onto the record. I second that motion. You guys are great. 
<laughs> our brain <laughs> eye. <laughs> Hammer eye. All right. I thank you. Um, that's it. I'm done. Thank you this so much. This is the much. longest meeting like in the history of my life. No, <laughs> like how long is this? Is almost eleven o'clock at night. Oh my god. Yes, well, <laughs> these things happen. I that mean, landscape thing. Long, this is the longest one we have ever had. Really? Ever. Ever. This is longer than about three meetings. Um, and Kathy, maybe we should make um, a. So usually a, half an hour or like 45 minutes. Yes. Yeah. Um, if we have another, um, if you're seeing that we have another docket of this length, then we may need to bounce people and, you know, not take them all right. and, and stag, say you're, we're going to hear you in two months because we don't need to do this too. To yeah. uh, to uh, to yeah. us or to the applicants. I mean, this poor guy would get three poor hours. people. I know. This guy's oh, like, what am I? So yeah, no. Let's let's um. What was this? This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But there were a couple of contentious <laughs> things. We can't have more, more than one contentious one. <laughs> well, All I right. think what we really need we really need is the the decision on Maple Road. I mean, that's got to go to. That yeah, legal it, issue that is being presented is just that we've been rolling around on that and it, it didn't move any closer to resolution. So you're, I you're, said, you're absolutely right, Bob. And I, um, that statute I, is bizarre. That's really complicated. It is. It's complicated. And it, it you know, it really is this, I, you know, town solicitors should say, look, you know, it, it just, it doesn't work like that. And I know that in the past it's though, I don't want to delay this any longer, but the developer, the gentleman, the older gentleman who kept saying, well, we've done it, we've done it, we've done it. Well, that, you know, that's an interesting point, but maybe it, why, like what this, so, this, you know, I mean, so, uh, uh, we'll just, We'll take what they submit. We'll send it. I'll send it to town council. Ask them to clarify and opine, and so we have something to rely on. I think um, uh, we can. And the, other, the other question to send along with that, Jen, is um, if if we do allow it, if we do I, grandfather I think we gotta, it, well, in, we got to be really careful else, because we're 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 no, I know, we, we but can't uh, it's, talk about it's the, sending it along. Uh, is there any limitations? Because even the developer said that. You know, uh, that's the question I've got. He kept telling us, he represented that if, if it is grandfathered, it would only be for that sole purpose and they would have to comply with all other um, yeah, purposes. That's, yeah. If that's the case, town council might be able to tell us that is the, pro the proper procedure. I don't know what it is. So I'd, 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 I'd like to find that out. That's all. Mm -hmm. I need some help with that issue. All right, we definitely need them to, I wanna get their input. Um, I want to wrap this up as yeah, next week or next month so we don't have any more trailing issues. Thank you. I'll let you all go. <laughs> Just thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your Good evening. <laughs> you as well. Okay. Good night, all. Take care, Maria. All right. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Cal. Bye. Bye.